Hey guys, and welcome to Little Blackbird 91. Uh, giving you a video uh, around this topic. You know, last night we had quite an epic battle on this channel. And so we wanted to have a conversation. Was it tone policing or were we creating good boundaries? And so we're going to have a good discussion um, around it. I'm going to show some video clips as well. Just kind of break down in terms of what happened last night <clears throat> and why um, I decided in the end to... Uh, remove Annalisa from the conversation. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you do me a favor, like it, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notification of the up lows. And for those of you who are returnees, already know what it is, baby. You got the minerals. Listen, stay hydrated. Listen, let's get straight into it because my uh, my throat is trying to play out with me. All right, cool. So um, last night was a, 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 such an intriguing conversation. It is one of those conversations that were... Uh, eye-opening okay uh you know we had uh start off with about an hour and a half of men just talking about their experiences and what they had what their their viewpoint was on uh you know this topic which we said do black men date uh white um, do black men date black women so the original concept of this was that we were having men's conversation right we were having a men's panel right um and you know fortunately enough as uh, you know, uh, our, our brother Corey was like, listen, let's go live with it. I said, all right, let's go live with it. So we went live with it, right? And I thought, yeah, this is going to be good. We'll go live with it, we'll have this conversation, and we'll give a male perspective because that's that's what the male's panel was meant to do, give a male's perspective. It's not meant to give a female perspective. It's not meant to give other people's perspective. It's a male perspective amongst the men that were speaking on the panel. And so that conversation goes in for about an hour and a half and we we get an hour and a half and we get some really good conversation. And then someone gets a bright idea. Right. David. Right. Beautiful. No problems at all. So listen, let's get some women on board because you know what? We're having this conversation. It's live, you know, and we're talking about black men dating black women. Maybe black women see things differently. So then David gets involved and, you know, um, it enters the, uh, the, we get the woman on board to have a conversation, right? We have both Crystal and both Layla get involved in the conversation. And one of the things I was appreciative of was they disagreed in parts, but they were trying to have a conversation. Now, I, I want to make it very clear. A debate is not a converse, it's not the same as having a conversation here, right? Uh, um, <laughs> a debate is a form of communication, but it isn't wasn't conversation, right? Um, you know, you can com you can conversate. I know you can't use conversate. You can conversate in a, in a in a in a debate style, but that's not what I was asking for. Whilst we're having the women and the men on the panel, you guys are very much aware. We had I had discussed this, you know, hours before that, saying, "Look, I made a mistake last time of making it." you versus me and 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 man versus woman I, I i made a mistake of getting too much emotionally invested um to to make the conversation become us and them thank you very much uh conversing all right i i made it i, I got too much involved to make it us and them right and when you're too heavily inv inv invested you use energy um uh, use certain words you start blaming uh, accusing um and you become very uh, uh defensive right and so i didn't want that kind of conversation if we're going to have men and women talking about situation i wanted to hear what the women were saying i wanted to understand and i wanted to empathize with their position as well right um and i wanted them to also understand our position hear where we're coming from and get our perspective and then let's begin to then obviously see if we can move some jigsaw pieces around move some uh, uh, uh pieces of puzzle around and then start kind of you know uh i would say even kind of challenging each other say hey look have you looked at this area have you looked at this area have you looked at this area right and and then that's how we learn from one another right because the the truth of the matter is the, you know our black women you know we know that intersectionality does play a part right so when we're talking about how as a black community we suffer uh well at least i know um that there's intersectionality here which is that women get it harder because they are both female and also black right but that doesn't negate the fact that both sets of parties are going through traumatic experiences and that's contributing towards the way that each individual decides to act now, depending on the presets of each individual person as a man or woman, we may act differently, right? And it's not an excuse, it's a reason. And that's the key thing, excuse, it was a reason, okay? So now, um, 
you know, as we're having a conversation, uh, you know, we're, we're getting we're getting some different aspects. Lola's pushing back a little bit. Crystal's pushing back a little bit as well, letting us know that, hey, they, they see things a little bit differently, right? Right. And we were even saying, OK, so we mentioned about uh, the six foot situation, right, which Corey was mentioning in a personal manner, saying he gave a personal testimony around being six foot. And then myself and Sean actually came out and said, we don't really care if you, if you mention six foot. It's up to you. Yeah, that's it. It's up to you. If you feel that you want to have a six foot guy, hey, man, go what you want to go with. Right. Um, and and stuff. So, you know, we we had even dissension or I should say even disagreements even amongst us as men. Right. We had different viewpoints when it came to even dealing with uh, are we exclusively dating black women? Are we dating uh, openly? What What is our position here? Right. This was meant to be a conversation of understanding and listening. Right. Because, like I said, I don't think exactly the same way Sean does. Corey doesn't think exactly the same way I do. You know, David doesn't think the same way as Corey does, right? We all think differently, but we can have points where we meet, right? So this was very, very important, um, you know? Uh, and so this this was this was a, um, this was a good conversation uh, to have, right? Because it was, it was an open field where we can get one another's a point of view, right? So then we get onto this point. So I'm going to start breaking it down, right? Because first and foremost, <laughs> first and foremost, let me just say this, uh, you know, when you enter into a space and the space is not giving you rah-rah energy, the space itself is not combative, the space itself is open for people to have a good dialogue, right? And you jump in with that level of combativeness and energy, you've taken advantage of the society that you're in say it straight right if 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 uh, i have been i got invited the other that was some weeks back to come on to um janice's uh, onto janice janice i think it was janice janice's uh channel okay right and i disagreed with the points they made right i i disagreed with the points that janice made she was calling people dusty da, 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 and i disagreed when i got onto the stage i didn't come rah rah first of all it's not my platform and second of all, how does that get a conversation going to get them to understand my point? Am I trying to beat you with a hammer over your head to get you to um, to to get you to, up to my side? I'm trying to drag you over to my side, or am I trying to have some conversation so you can understand where I'm coming from? Right? As mature adults, right? In this particular scenario, all right. In other scenarios, yes, but in this particular scenario, it's conversation. Right. And, and we're trying to understand one another. Right. We're, we're not trying. We weren't trying to debate. It wasn't a debate situation. Right. So when I had a conversation with Janice, I just I would say, Look, hey, Janice, listen, I see your point. I disagree. But here's my perspective on the situation. It wasn't my space. One of the things I've become very aware of as a man is the privilege I have when I enter into female spaces. Right. As a male, I'm very much aware, and sometimes and sometimes I'm not even aware, right? As, as a man, there's going to be points where I'm going to have blind spots. But when I entered into a female space, I was very much aware that how I'm going to end, how I'm going to enter the space is very important, right? How how I'm entering into a space is so important because if that if I, if I want them to understand my point and not prove them right, thinking that girls are dusty, if I if I start showing all that energy, right? Okay, and, and, and I start showing all that energy to them, right? They're gonna shut down. They ain't gonna listen to me. They're gonna say, "Oh, he's one of those men. He's one of those butt hurt men. He's one of those men that don't, that hate black women." I get it now, and I talk like this. So, what more would I would I get if I jump into a situation and I and I and I start going? Rrr, 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 rrr. What's gonna happen? Do you see what I'm saying? So, when you go into somebody else's space, the empathetic thing to do. The person who thinks about the environment that they're going into considers the environment on what's happening and considers the context of conversation. That's what per a person who's socially aware does, right? And I said this before, if you allow emotions to rule you, you will, you will find yourself in spaces doing things you shouldn't be doing, right? And I want to make this very, very clear. She does not re represent all black women. Sorry. She does not represent all black women. I'll say it again. 
she does not represent all black women, right? As far as I'm, people can agree with her, but the way she handled it, I have met so many respectful black women. There's no, I, there's no way I'm going to even think about labeling her as, see, that's what black women do, right? That's, that's what black women do. I'm, I'm, no. Nah. Even if you agree with her, if, even if you agree with her, that's cool. But I'm not, I'm not about to start labeling all black women as that, right? But what we had yesterday was black men don't do duh. Black men don't do duh. Black men don't do duh. And I, and I sent a message to the boys and I said to the boys, listen, well done. Do you know why? Because yesterday y'all learned, <laughs> y'all learned something yesterday, right? But I kept on saying some women in my experience, from what I've seen, right? This is so important, right? This is so important because when we, when we do black men, black women, right? You begin to start going on to what we call, begin to alienate people, right? You begin to alienate people. So for instance, when you go into Kevin Samuel's channel, what do they do? Black women are this. Black women are that. Black women are this. Black women are that. You go onto the other side of the channel, other side of the uh, YouTube channels, Pink Pillars. Black men only do this, and black men ain't this, and black men ain't that. Nobody, nobody talks about nuance, right? So when you get into both sides, when you get into both sides, right, you start to realize both sides like to alienate because they want to win. They're not here for conversation, right? They're not here for conversation. When you're here for conversation, right? OK, when you have a conversation, you've got to start being very careful. I, 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 I said this to the men. And, and if you, ask, you can ask the man, Sean, Corey, David, um, David Lester, because we everything. But I know myself and Corey and, 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 and Sean, I've, I've said this before. I said, man, then when we're talking about the women, we've got to say some. You've got to say some. We've got to say these group or this section of women. Right. So that it doesn't become a broad blanket statement because not all women behave like this. And actually the majority don't do that, right? And there's some few people effing it up for the rest of the people, right? So, so, so when I'm talking about this situation, I'll show you the clips in a second if you don't understand what I'm talking about. But, um, you know, we, we, we want to, if you want to have a discussion with somebody, um, if you want to have a discussion with somebody, right? You gotta be you. You gotta be mindful of the language you use, so it doesn't become a, a, an attack, right? So it doesn't become an attack. Um. Uh, so uh, exactly, this is a good point, right? It's a oh, sorry, it's a good point. This one here, like which once the energy went to that point, it was very hard to recover. But uh, you know what? I I and so some of my asks, why did I allow it to go on so long? I wanted a teachable moment. I wanted a teachable moment, right? I wanted a teachable moment. I wanted black men and black women who follow us on this channel to see something, right? Number one, it's a lesson for both parties. Number one, you guys hear me all the time talking about the fact that as men, we must have emotional regulation. As black men, I don't know about the rest of the community, leave them alone, but for us as black men, we must have emotional regulation. When somebody's wiling out as a woman, okay, all right, or you're dating someone who's wiling out, you don't wile out too. You don't wile out too, right? You don't wile out too. I've been saying this, you guys have heard me say this, but I'm saying to the men all the time, man them, you have to regulate yourselves. I wanted you to see it in action. What happens? Right. So the lady's got a first hand experience and the mandem too. We got a first hand experience of putting it into practice. What does emotional regulation look like? Person came in. Right. Person came in, came in like a wrecking ball, missed the whole thing, wanted to start fighting everybody. What do you do? Right. And now if this was a physical conversation, I would have told everybody, just walk away, guys, and leave it alone. Right. Just walk away and leave it alone. But because it was online, what I wanted to, sh I wanted this, I, I needed it to go on longer so you can, act, so that there's no excuse of saying, oh, you didn't let her speak, or you didn't let her go on, or you, you cut her off early. Bruv, she had a whole hour, a whole hour on the panel to get it right. She was spoken to on two, uh, by myself specifically, three times. Bebe, listen, chill on that, man. Listen, 
we want to hear your point, but just the way you're coming with the energy, calm. We are here to discuss, not to fight. Said that three times. Three times. I personally said it. Lola has said it. Right? Sean had a point. David had to say a point, right? We were very patient in that hour. We're trying to let the person know the way you're coming into the conversation is wrong. Now, here's a teachable moment for both men and women, right? First of all, for us as men, emotional regulation. For the ladies, sometimes as men, we say, sometimes when we're talking to women, this is what we get. It's not all women. She does not represent all women. Let me say it again. She does not represent all black women. But sometimes when us men are talking, we're saying, we actually encounter women like her. Right? We we actually encounter women like her. Right? So, so uh, you know, I, I, I think, uh, <laughs> I, I think the situation here, right? Someone said, could I have dealt with it behind the scenes? No. Nah. You, you, if you openly disrespect the space after being told not to disrespect the space, you're reprimanded in open space. I'm not your boyfriend. If I was your boyfriend, I'll take you behind the scenes. I'm not your boyfriend. If I was your boyfriend, then yeah, I, I can say, Let's, <laughs> babe, wait till we get home. No, I'm not your boyfriend. I'm, 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 I'm somebody you came into a space with. So... Uh, Grace and Mercy, I appreciate that, and I understand what you're and understand what you're saying. I'm not saying that you're wrong for saying that. I think you're absolutely right. In a relationship, yes, I encourage it. When it's your partner, you wait till you get home, and you give them the fire them. But when I don't know you from Adam, right? I don't know you from Adam, and you move in this way, disrespecting the community that you're in. No, you you're gonna get dealt with right there, right? And it wasn't even a dealing with. It was just a, sorry, mute and, and remove. It wasn't even a dealing with. It was a mute and remove, right? So what, 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 I'm, say, what I'm saying here is, again, she does not represent all black women. She don't. So she can't change my mind as to how I feel about black women because I have met so many positive, well-mannered, respectful black women who know how to conversate, so, conversate, co converse, <laughs> who knows how to con converse, do you know what I'm saying, so I, it's, it's just an example of somebody who didn't know how to handle themselves in this type of space, right, um, so, so let me, let me go to the clips, and, and we'll talk a bit more, um, you know, uh, you know, her, again, her points, her points, I believe, were correct, we at, and this this is I think the part that is that really was like oh my god baby like come on before she got there we had mentioned hip hop we had mentioned men we've got to hold each other accountable we had started having a dialogue between us as men about, it, it, it started speaking about us as men um why why are people well just get into why are black men dating white women why are black men dating uh, successful women and we were given different points we were discussing. Right, we were discussing. So yes, uh, YC, all her points were right, but we were saying the same thing. If you don't listen, you would have never. You don't know that we were. We were. We had just discussed all of that in a section of one hour and thirty or so minutes. Us as men were discussing this, right? Bar maybe one or two points. Most of the points she made, we had already made it, and I was trying to get her to say, "Chill." We got you. Like we 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 actually deep what you're saying. That in this space, you don't need to be frustrated and angry because we're hearing you. Right? But she wasn't listening to hear. She was listening to respond. And so it's a lesson not only for women, but for men too. If you're in a relationship and you're dating someone, are you listening to them to respond? Or are you listening to hear them? Right. And I am your source of that physically. Y'all saw it all season. You saw it with me all season. I did it with the Zach situation. Right. At, at most points, I'm listening, but I'm listening to respond. And you saw what happened. Right. 
It wasn't productive conversation. It was us and it was them. Right? You see what I'm saying? So, so, so you saw that, you saw that you guys saw a physical representation with me. Right? You saw that with me. You saw that with me physically doing it every week saying, yo, guys, I, I you know, it's just, it's you. And then alienating people because I wanted to be right about my point. Do you see what I'm saying? So now what happens is both parties lose. You see, wh whether she knows it or not, by her doing that, nobody wins. Whether I agree with her or not, nobody wins. Because the other side is frustrated. They're not listening. The other side's not listening. They're, they're not listening. They're now, they're now thinking they're right. Now nobody wins. Nobody wins. Because now everybody wants to say, oh, I'm staying in my position. You ain't taking me for a dickhead. You ain't taking me for a mug. Right? And so that's that's why I that's why I wanted her to ex I wanted her to keep going. So you can see for a whole hour we were patient. Some of us are like her when we discuss. I included. Some of us are like her when we discuss. Some of us are like that in relationships. We, we, we think we're right, and then it's da, 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 right? And you don't hear a word your partner said. You don't hear a word, you know, your partner said, right? So this is a beautiful moment to kind of watch it in progress and see, hey, look, you know, maybe there's another way, right? And, and this is, <laughs> in a sense... In some sense, I mean, to be honest, listen, um, myself, Corey, Sean, David, we don't rock with K Kevin Samuels. We don't watch his stuff. We don't watch his stuff. It's interesting because the label that we were given by our sister Annalisa was that we were uh, making Kevin Samuels points. But those were the points that we had before Kevin Samuels. It just coincides that he makes some of the same points that we make. It's not a Kevin Samuels point. It's a man's point. I had the same, some of the same thoughts that Kevin Samuels had before he was Kevin Samuels. Suddenly, what you're actually... When, when people start labeling us as Kelsey Samuel, little, uh, little uh, Kevin Samuel Little, uh, Kevin Samuel Jr., when people start, when 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 women start labeling some women, let me say this: some women start labeling men this, some men like this. All it all it does is say you don't actually hear what we're actually saying. I'm not saying that it's all points, by the way, but there are coinciding points. If Kevin Samuel is a man and I'm a man, we're gonna have coinciding points. You're gonna have coinciding points with people who <laughs> let me say what's her name, Sheree. Sheree Seven, yeah? Sheree Seven who tells women to lie and to manipulate purposely, to lie. You may have the same points as her, but I'm not going to call you Sheree. I'm not going to call your points Sheree. Right? I'm not going to mix you up with someone who has a different ideology just because you have some of the similar points. That's not, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I, 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 again, we don't sponsor Kevin Samuels here. We don't we don't sponsor him at all. Right. But let's let's get some of the clips. OK. Let's get some of the clips. Let's get some of the clips that we were talking about. Right. Let me discuss some of this um, because we're talking about tone policing. Right. And I saw in the chat uh, at the time of the live, some people were saying, oh, you're, you're tone policing her, you're tone policing her. And in some sense. There is some truth to that because the moment I talk about tone, in some sense, I'm, I'm tone policing, right? The, in some sense, the moment I start talking about your tone or your energy or your volume, I'm in some sense talking about tone policing. Um, you know, so there is some element of truth there. I, 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 I can't run away from that because at the end of the day, you know, if I mention tone, that, that deals with tone policing in some sense or form. But the, the fullness of that is the environment that we were having a discussion in 
we wanted it in a certain way, right? We wanted it in a certain way. Um, you know, I, I, I think, I, I think in this particular aspect, you know, uh, especially as a man, I, I tell the men all the time, and you, if you ladies watch, you know, I talk about men holding good boundaries, right? I talk about men holding good boundaries, right? Now, I kept on warning her. This was part of the boundaries. You warn people. You let them know, hey, you're getting a little bit too close. Chill. You're getting too close. You're getting too close to my boundaries. I need you to back up. As a man, you have to let people know that. Otherwise, we get the Cornelius situation where someone's just running over your boundaries. Right? So part of, part of it was to let her know, listen, hey, in this community, we, we, we discuss it. We, we're not fighting. We're discussing in other communities, they may fight, but that's okay. That's how they do it. But in this one, that's not how we're doing it. And you warn the person once, twice, three times, and you give them enough rope to hang themselves so that you're satisfied that I've not done a Kevin Samuels, <laughs> like allowed you to do it and then cut you up. Nah, bro, she spoke for an hour and then I got to that point, right? But like I said, let me get to some of the clips that we were uh, watching. Uh, let's have a look. Um... Okay, let's have a look at what I'm saying. Okay. So, who Chile. Let me get to this part here. Uh, okay. So, because it was a, a conversation, I'm going to play the clip a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to play the clip a little bit longer. It was a conversation. Just want to just, uh, you know, I want to be able to to make this understandable um, so we can have this conversation. Okay, let's go. Man, to be honest with you, can, you, shouldn't pick, you shouldn't pick a husband who can't protect and provide. Can I interject? Please do. Thank you. So let's, if we're having this conversation with any any intention at all, Let's differentiate between communities. Are we having this? Pause. Now, you're probably thinking, what's he pausing for? The very first thing, right? When people are having conversation and 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 having a really good conversation, her first words, and this, as, do you know what? I spoke to a family member about this as well. You are having a conversation. If you don't want to accuse people, you've got to be very careful. The energy, the tone the delivery and the words you use, right? The very first thing she said, if we're trying to be intentional, so what that does and what that supposes, right, is that the people already discussing are not being intentional about the conversation they're having and that you are coming in and making it intentional, right? And that straight away, okay, is a small thing, but it's a big thing. And what you don't realize is people pick up on this but sometimes, you know, like uh, we call it microaggressions, right? Microaggression, uh, 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 microaggression, uh, microaggressions, right? As black people, we know, right? This is what we're talking about. When someone starts to put verbiage together, right? It will sound normal until you actually really start to try and break it down, right? So when when she said, obviously, first and foremost, hold on a minute, you know, let's be intentional. Hold on. We're, we were having an intentional conversation before you got here. By you saying that you believe that you are only one bringing intentionality and no one else has brought intentionality to the panel, that already starts what we're talking about, that disrespect. You know, and you don't realize. Right. So I'm just I'm just kind of pointing out why this this is this is little things that we we can we can pick up and learn do you know what i mean um you know and again again i actually agree with everybody saying we agreed with her we agreed with her but we don't know that because she wanted to fight but anyway let's go on conversation are we talking about black men and black women exclusively or are we talking about relation, relationship dynamics overall? I, I need to know because if you're going, really you're making paintbrush statements when you're talking about what women want. First of all, you're not a woman. 
it, that's a problem to think that you know what we're looking for, whether it be six, eight or average. You don't know, and you're actually statistically wrong. Black women specifically date down. They date down in terms of the level of education because we have higher education, that's just a fact. And in terms of socioeconomic status, we date down. And, and it may not be a choice, and we, we don't want to, but that's sort of the pool that we're dealing with when it comes to dating black men, because that's just where they are. So just now pause. Nobody disagrees. You guys watched my, my live that I said the other day. I said to you, ladies, I said, what's happened in our community? I said, women, right? I said, women have already, have black women have had a, an opportunity, all right, to come into the environment and work, and they're differently motivated. I said, the men are struggling to catch up because they don't have the same motivation. They've, they've been privileged, right? So I've made this point before, right? Uh, uh, you know, about how, you know, uh, as black men, we are almost, it almost it, there's a, a bigger gap of black men who are behind. There's an elite group, but there's, uh, the, the general mass seems to be behind. We, we need to try and catch up in the way that black women are going forward, right? So I, I get that point. You know what I mean? I get that point. And we, and we was with it. We was with it, right? Okay. Let's Simply go. speaking. So no, and studies have also shown that women in general tend to lean on personality and connection rather than looks. It is men. And I know this because you have Kevin Samuels and you guys can all, oh, but why are you talking? Why are you trying to lump me in? You're using a Kevin Samuels talking point. That's now, here's another thing that people don't realize. When you're having discussion and you're talking to people and you go, well, obviously, that's what that's what you ladies do. You talk like this and you you do that. And whenever you do this, you do, 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 do. You don't realize that you're actually disrespecting a person. You don't need to do it. I, I, again, Queen of Jungle, I never said she was angry. I said she came in with energy, rah rah energy. I didn't call her angry. I said she came with rah rah energy. So, Queen of Jungle, I need you to relax. <laughs> you, you're doing too much right now, right? When you start doing the whole, but that's how you talk, do, do, do. you talk like this. And that's how you do things. And, uh, and you men all go to this. Or women, oh, women, you women do this. And that's how you talk. And you do that. When you start doing that, you start disrespecting the person right in front of you. Right? And that in itself is, is degrading for the person that you're talking to because you're not showing that level of respect. Now, if a man does that, oh, you already know because, right? You know, you already know. I, I, I told you guys about them things there, like when Kevin Samuels does those kind of things, I don't like that kind of thing. I don't, I don't like when people start doing that kind of thing because it's disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Right? Like it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's, 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 it's you, you have to, you have to, you have to be careful in how you are dealing with other people when you want to get your point across, Uh, you know, it, it it doesn't it it doesn't allow for people to then hear you right because now and, and like I like I said you if you want to if you want to do energy I can do energy you know I can do energy if you want energy I can do energy but you know what happens nothing gets resolved it's not productive thank you grace mercy and saved it's not it's not productive right so. Yes, you have the right point. And I, I always say this to my friend that, you know, um, you, you, you can be in the right, but how you respond can make you wrong. Right? You can be in the right, but how you respond is wrong. Chakra, we weren't triggered. We weren't triggered. That's why I said the men should chill. We weren't triggered. See, when you start putting that, you're asking yourself, we're triggered. We're not triggered. That's why I'm teaching it in this moment right now. Not triggered. Not triggered. We're letting you know that this is what behavior from both men or women is unacceptable. Shouldn't be happening. Shouldn't be happening. Right? Anyway, let's let's go. That's why I'm going to lump you in, in that camp. You, you did that, not me. The reality is Kevin Samuels has built an entire platform, a million strong, predicated on the berate, berating black women and asking them what their dress size is. 
what, what black women are, are doing that? Do you know, do you have a channel where we're asking, Hey, what's your boxer size? What's your shoe size? No, you, you don't. The reality is black women are not focused on the exterior. That's the reality and studies will substantiate that. So this idea that we want someone who's six, eight, first of all, it, you can't just say anything you want to say and think it's going to stick. Don't throw mud on the wall and think it's going to stick. It doesn't work that way. The reality is black women specifically date down and women in general <sighs> tend to lean on, not, not leaning on looks, but yes, we do lean on personality, um, the, the emotional piece, the emotional uh, part of the relationship and provisions and providing. Yep, she can you provide lies. and can you protect? Yep. Do black men? By and large, no. That's the reality. They don't even protect themselves, let alone their women and children. Their communities are, you can run, you, you can pretty much do anything you want in, in the black community. Now, I don't know if you, I actually never picked up this point. I don't know if you actually picked it up. She said, black men don't even protect themselves. And remember, I told you guys, if you, you got to be very careful what words you're using. Black men now means all. And you might not think you're using all, right? It's the same when I say, well, black women. As soon as I say black women, no one's going to hear anything. They're going to assume I'm talking about every single black woman, right? So when you say black men do not defend themselves, I'm looking at it like, no, are you talking about the pookies and the ray rays that go to prison, baby? And those who commit crimes? Oh, my phone went off, sorry. Hold on, I'll get my phone, my phone went off. But are, are you talking about them people there? Because they're not the same as me. You know what I mean? Uh, like. As far as I'm concerned, I protect myself. And the black men that I know protect themselves. And the black men I know are educated. The black men I know, all right, treat women correctly, right? So it, it, it's it's that, and I'm, I'm talking about the language piece. This is really important. Two seconds, I'm going to get my camera. I'm talking about the, the language piece here, um, in, in a sense. Let me put my uh, camera on, because otherwise this thing is not going to show you guys. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Two seconds, guys. Let me let this play. Actually, while I'm doing that, let me let this play so you guys can hear. And really, because of black men. So let's be in, I, I really had to come up here because you specifically, Corey, are being intellectually dishonest. And you're trying to tell, as a man, trying to tell women what they're looking for. It, what black women are looking for and what they get are two different things. We're looking for builders and providers, and we're we're unfortunately settling for average, which is black the position that black men are in by and large globally. They're in an average position. That's just the reality. That's it. So you can take your Kevin Samuel talking points elsewhere because there's no base in fact. It's not supported by any any statistical evidence. Six eight of all hates really. Like, come on, guys. Let's like <clears throat> let's be honest if we're gonna have this conversation, please. Of course. By the way, welcome. Sorry. To yeah. You. Came in yes. hard. Uh, I, yeah. I appreciate you. Uh, let me let me just gonna say this one thing. Uh, number one, how long has Kevin Samuels been around for? How long have men been around for? It's not Kevin Samuels point. It's a man's point. He's only explained what a man's point. Now there are aspects of Kevin Samuels' conversation which most of the men here do not agree with. Right. So when you came, Sorry, what did you say? When you, I said, there's parts of his conversation that we don't agree with. So when you came in hot, straight away labeling Corey's point as a Kevin Samuels point, if you want to talk about being intellectually dishonest, you just done it yourself. You came in hot, and I hear that. I like some of your points. I'm actually with it. Right. I actually, I actually like some of your points. But Kevin Samuels is brand new. Men have been around for years. And those thoughts have been around before Kevin Summers expressed those thoughts. Some of them we do not agree, agree with. Now, specifically, you mentioned about stats. And earlier on, we mentioned about having a balance between anecdotally or stats, right? So he said about, okay, six for eight. I think, of course, when we say six for eight, it doesn't mean necessarily a woman's actually said six for eight. It's an exaggeration or hyperbole that we're using at a time to kind of express what we're saying, right? So let me, let me say this right now. You gave a point, you gave, it, you gave a stat. Well, someone, we said earlier on that you have to have a balance. You gave us that, but anecdotally, we can also say that sometimes as men, we've experienced with women having this conversation that they mention height. So it's about coming with a, with, a, with a balance from both sides. I'm with you. I actually get some of your points and I'm, I'm rocking with you. 
But yeah, I think you just need to just temper, right? Some of the parts of the conversation there. But I'm I'm actually with you. So before you let it jump in, I'm gonna let Loda jump in, and we'll, I'm gonna come back to you. But I'm I'm hearing you. Okay, I, just, I want you just to work with us a little bit here. All right, all right. We're not fighting the way. I'm with you tonight, Anissa. And I remember. <laughs> wait, hold on. Before we go to it, Anissa, you're familiar. You're familiar. I've seen you somewhere, and it's gonna come back to me. The Lord is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Where. It doesn't. Okay. Matter. Okay. No worries. No okay. worries. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, no. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I know, I know, I know. My pronunciation of high uh, is hyperbole, and I said hyperbole. Um, <laughs> my pronunciations are literally the bar in hell. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, you know, uh, and so okay, so yeah. I, as I was saying, I had I had seen her somewhere, right? Um, and bec and I knew. Her Do you know what? As soon as I saw her come on the panel. Her face was familiar. And I was like, I'm going to give you a chance, but I know where you're going, right? I know where you're going. Like, okay. So uh, I had seen, and someone sent me the thing. I had seen her, um, where I actually had seen her was on Saints and Sinners uh, 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 YouTube. And she was having a debate with him. And I was like, the way, I said, the way these two are debating, I was like, uh, I mean, it's a little bit some way. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh... Oh, okay. Was her yelling at a man down? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I never. I don't think I've even seen that. Uh, that viral video. I have to kind of watch it then. Um, but um, you know, uh, you know. So, for 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 you know, I had I had seen her from somewhere. So that was what was tickling me. But um, I, I want you to pay attention, right? Because you know, uh, Lola obviously disagreed with us, right? But I, I want you to kind of listen to a little bit of Lola's vernacular. Now, listen, Lola has given up. Uh, why do I call her? Why do I call Lola smoke artist? I call her smoke artist because she releases smoke, smoke, and and some and I've caught some flack from Lola. Have I not? There's been some times where Lola has absolutely finished me personally, but we've never taken it anywhere because the the tone and the delivery of the message is so important, right? But let's listen to a little bit about what I'm what I'm kind of saying here as well. That validation, oh. you know, time. Let me get to say because oh. I want to I want to ski it up. About it, I don't want to say most and throw out those numbers, but at least half black females are with men who are either earning what they're earning or the black man's earning a lot less. Most people can testify to that, but at the same time, we get accused and get labeled with these names that we don't we're not right or die, we don't stick with the man, we don't do these things, but it's not true, and we don't know where these labels came from. We have all these different names, and you'll see celebrities out there saying stuff about when they have this choice or this preference for a woman of a different shade or of a different race because we are angry or because we're bitter or because we don't know how to be or because we don't want to submit all these different things so i think that's where sometimes the venom comes from whereas for the most part most of us are just living our lives and trying to get along and we all looking for a man who's over six not that we're looking for but if we meet one that would be nice i would like to wear heels and look up to him that would be nice. But is that a qualifier? Is that going to make me not pick the right person for me? Definitely not. I won't even look for someone and say he must earn more than me, but he must be doing something constructive. And I think that's where I kind of want us to kind of come in the middle. Because on my end as a woman, I would love to ask, you know, and I don't want to generalize, but it does seem I lived in most cities, whether it was Atlanta, whether it was New York City and Brooklyn. And most of the times I would see a lot of black men with men with women who didn't look like me for one reason or another and so that's the question and it's not that i would have anything against them doing that but i have something against it when i'm being put down as something else and what makes it worse is you see a lot of black women sexualizing these videos you know they're only good for the big butt or for the twerking or all these things and they're so far away from that that it's sometimes a little frustrating when we don't have a mic to say something and so conversations like this are great but what i really want us to do is really talk and almost kind of laugh about it and listen to each other as opposed to kind of because i might end up with a vanilla brother tomorrow i don't have anything against them i'm just saying i just want us well yeah cause I, look kojo did you see my little little what, tiktok with that that honey from uk he was fine 
and he had swag. So I don't have anything against the crossing, but I just have something wrong when we get accused or labeled to be less than. And so and we're looking, it's one thing to look at our community and say, you know what, you know, we're for each other, but it's another thing when it's been pressed on the European standard of beauty. So we're not even recognized in the public arena as beautiful, as magical. That's where that black girl magic phrase came from because we are magical, but we're not acknowledged. We're not even, we're not praised for any of our gifts. We're simply just put to the side, but everything we do when somebody else does it, it's praised and lifted up. So that's really what I want us to con continue to talk about, like really accept us and, and acknowledge what we bring to the table. That's, that's, the, that's the main thing for me. Can I, can I say something? Now, pause before she decides to go off on her rant and decide to try and come at Lola too. Lola said, and, and do you know what? Even Lola was even, I think even Lola was even being nice here, right? And the reason why she probably she was being nice here is because, because the other party involved had now taken the conversation left wise, right? Because Lola, Lola was a little bit more direct earlier on. When we were having a conversation with Lola and Crystal, Lola's a bit more direct, right? But in this case, I think she tried to tone it down because of the fact that already we had somebody else here trying to do madness, right? But Lola actually hit about five or six points that our sister on the left also was was banging points on, right? The same points, but the way she came at it. Now, I even think that Lola could have been more direct, right? But I think she was trying not to come direct as possible because someone else also was doing the exact same thing, right? Um, you know what I mean? So, so she probably turned it down a little bit, okay? Um, and, and so now what happens is, as soon as Lo and listen, Lola's even disagreeing with us, right? Right. Uh, again, we're not saying she's angry. We no one's no one says she's angry. So we're not saying she's an angry black woman. We've not said those words. I don't personally think she was angry. I think she was hurt. There's a big difference. Okay. Um, you know, so uh in this in this point, I, I think Lola could even would have come Lola would have come more would have come up more uh, uh, uh direct, but because of the other party involved who was already coming so left field i think she wanted to tamper it down she was understanding the situation right okay um okay so uh what 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 she, the points that she had made right we could have she was actually she was actually counter countering um Corey's points so when Corey had said about oh six for eight and even though he was kind of uh you know hyper hyper hy hyperbole he's doing hyperbole with, with saying six eight and stuff like that lola actually counted his point right lola counted his point she counted the point and straight away as soon as she counted the point she did it in a way that fam we're, we're now going to have a conversation right we're now going to have a conversation so as soon as as soon as obviously our sister gets involved she then wants to attack everybody now so now now lola's also fair game even though lola was actually agreeing with her point that's why I'm talking about the fact that when you start getting into that space, this is not passion. You see, if you can be so passionate, you don't know how to control it. You're, you're, it's no longer passion. We have to start calling it. You, uh, we have to give it another name. Your passion shouldn't take you to a point where you're overspilling. Right? It sounds nice, but you don't have discipline. There has to be some level of discipline. Right? Because you, the passion that you have, the fire that you have, should also be understood that no context, no what, where you are, who you're with, what audience, it's got to be controlled passion. It's got to be controlled passion, right? You don't just let passion just emit. You don't just let passion just go overboard. You don't let passion just expand, right? That's dangerous, okay? It has, there has to be a, a, a controlled element of your passion and how you exhibit it. Right. I am passionate about relationships. OK, I am passionate about relationships, but I still got to have some discipline. About the way I discuss it, if I disagree with you, I, I got to be and I'm passionate, I got to choose a respectful manner and control my passion. Right. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying here at this moment is that, again, her delivery is off. But you see, if it was just a delivery issue. It, it, it'd be, it, wait, that's something to say But not only that As soon as she felt that Lola Right I, And I want you to listen to her speech now Right She doesn't say Our Or we She says You black women She actually takes herself out of the equation of black women She I want you to listen Listen very carefully I'm going to play it now Listen to what she's going to say She's not going to say we Or our as us, us as black women She says You as a black woman 
Now let's play the clip. I'll let you listen. To you, Lola, specifically, because it's interesting. We're having this conversation and we're saying, you know, this is this is what we want. This is what we're striving for. And we're sort of, you know, we're circling the drain. There's a reason that the beauty standard is is white women. And it's because of white men. White men uphold their women. White men provide for their women. White men protect their women. They have created that culture. And they won the well, they won the war and the battle. Let's be honest, and everyone else subscribes to it. That's the reality. If we had black men, it, it, first of all, who who creates culture? It's men. Men create the culture. We carry the culture on. We pass the culture on. If men had cultivated a culture in which black women were loved, whatever it, it, uh, whatever shade, whatever shape, if black was right in the eyes of black men, you wouldn't be saying what you're saying. The reality is it's not for black men. That's why they're not gonna come up here and cop a plea for you or for Crystal. They're not going to defend you. They're not going to take, it's just not gonna happen. Now I have to stop at this point, right? This is exactly what we're talking about. Black men are not gonna come out and defend you. Black people are not gonna come out and cop a plea for you. Black people are not gonna speak up for you. What black people and what black men? This is what I'm saying to you guys. If you if when you are discussing something, you've got to be very careful with the words you choose. You see, when you are when you're when you're coming from a place of a lot of emotion, when you're coming from a place of, of, of a lot of emotion, you don't choose your words very carefully. It just comes out. Right? It just comes out. Right. And this is why I was this is why I said to you, I was telling the men the exact same thing. You may think you go in, you go in the right direction, but I told the men, listen, say some. Oh, man them, say this section of black women. Man them, say this pocket of black women. So when we were dealing with the Zach and the Michaela situation, I was saying, it's not all black women saying this. It's a pocket of black women saying this. Now, I was still wrong at the end of the day. I was wrong in the end. But I was saying, it is some of the black women, right? And so so if you don't do that, what happens is, then if that's what you're saying, you're right. Okay, then we all, let's all pack our bags and go then. Why are we here? Because we're here to be an ally and we're to, here to hear your points. But you think that we're, you're lumping us all with everybody else. All right, cool. Every black man, let's pack our bags and let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. They don't need us. She knows exactly what she's talking about. Let's get out of here. We don't need to be here, guys. She knows what she does. She knows, she knows every black man and knows every black man how they behave. So let's pack our bags and go. Right? In the language of discourse, that instantly starts to create the divide. That's why I'm saying to you about the points can be good, but the usage of the words that you're saying can cause division. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? It can cause division. And now suddenly it no longer becomes about your point. It becomes about, well, our side's got to hold this point. Our side's it. And the first one that's going to come out of somebody's mouth is what I'm just saying right now. Well, it's not all black men that are doing that. When that's not what you want to, that's not what you're trying to, you're trying to, to bring a message to. You're trying to say that there's a, there's a larger consensus. There's, there's, a, there's a population of black men that are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So it's causing issues. Right? So it's causing issues. So that's how we have to approach it. Uh, but anyway, let me, let me, start, let me, give it, yeah. That's the standard, and that that's that's the baseline that they have cultivated. That's why you're having this conversation right now. That's the problem, and I feel like we're circling the drain. And the problem is, you guys can say, "Oh, Kevin Samuels, uh, you know, he's only been, you know, he's sort of just a blip in in the overall picture." But there was someone before him, and there was someone before him. There has always been someone degrading and berating black women and upholding them to unrealistically high expectations. Rap music has been around for a long time. What what does that do? Does that uphold black women? Does it uplift black women? No, it absolutely does not. It's one of the most degrading aspects of the culture. That's the reality. And unfortunately, that is a part of the culture. I hear you. I hear you. Allow me to interject really quick. I, I... And pause just quickly. Do you notice what I did to to David? Right. As soon as David was about to get involved, I said, "David, bring it down. Bring it down." I told David straight, "Bring it down, bro." I said, come down. Because what I didn't want was for him to also come in heavy. Right? I didn't want him to come in heavy. We, we don't want to see that. Right? I, 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 want to, I want him to come down. It's a discussion, not a fight. Right? Uh, so so, so it, it's important to understand that I, I, I wanted to make sure that we don't have that energy. You know what I mean? It's, it, I don't want it to get to that point. 
You know what I'm saying? Because again, I agree with a, point, a lot of our points. We had iterative, we had said this, the hip hop thing, we said it. Just before she got here, we said it. And we told, we said the exact same thing. We said, men, I, I even, t it was me and Corey were having this conversation about hip hop. And I said, I said, Corey, what about hip hop? I said, hip hop itself, because I said, oh, black culture. And he said, which part of black culture? And I said, oh, I said, hip hop. Let's talk about hip hop specifically. When we call people bees and hoes, right? Right? What, what does that do to the women in our community? Right? And we had that conversation, myself and 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 Corey and David. We had that conversation, right? So so we were saying a lot of these points already beforehand. We had said some of these points about holding men accountable and make sure men are doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? But anyway, let me let me let me let me let, me let play it. I want us to really just slow down for a second. Um, I'm listening to you, to your talking points and really trying to understand where you're coming from, but I am confused on this one aspect where. Um, you say that white men have created a culture in which they uphold and uplift white women, but then in the same breath, you also say that black men haven't been doing that job. Whereas in our current society, if it is white men who control the culture, then of course they're not black men aren't going to have the same ability to do what white no, men. No, no, no. Well, hold on, I'll let you speak. Of course, black men aren't going to have the same power because they're not on the same level in the society that we're at now. Oh my God! Of course, it's not. It stands to reason that what white women would be, would be upheld. So then you can't use the same logic because black men don't have the same power as white men in our. No, they, they do. They actually, they, we, if black men wanted don't. to pull, hold on. <laughs> if, hold on. If hold black men wanted. Hold on. Uh, Annalisa, let him finish. Let him land, and then you can this respond. This is you're so dishonest. Annalisa, people. you're so dishonest. Annalisa, and pause. You're being so dishonest. No one's being dishonest. That's a genuine view. That's a genuine viewpoint. He's not being dishonest. This is his viewpoint. This is why I said it has to be a discussion. Because if it's a debate, then you're going to start going into it. You're being dishonest. You're being intellectually dishonest. You're not really being true. And then it becomes uh, then it becomes this uh, uh, battleground. But if it's a conversation, you take what the person says and say, hey, okay, you know what? I actually disagree with that point. And here's why I disagree with that point. I disagree with it because actually when I look at a situation, when we look at this point, this point, this point, have you seen this? Right. So, 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 you know, and even, even when, as he was talking, she was ready to go again. Right. She's ready to go again because she's not here for a conversation. She's here for a battle. And, and again, I, I, I'm saying, again, I'm saying this again. She does not represent all black women, not even close. I won't even say some. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she does not represent a whole host of black women. Right. So I want to make that very, very clear. Um, uh, but this is this is a learning point for how we deal with how, when we're frustrated. We have to all look at her and go to ourselves. When I'm frustrated, do I do the exact same thing? If I'm in a, you know, what I'm saying, like, if I'm frustrated, do I start talking and not hearing anything they say? Right? Do 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 I do the same thing? Because because if 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 you do the exact same thing, right? If you do the exact same thing. Then all, all that's going to happen is you're not going to have a productive conversation with somebody. So again, I'm not saying she, again. I'm I'm trying to make it a a broad thing for all of us, um, you know, and, and and let everybody understand that this is a learning point for all of us. Do we do the exact same thing? You know. Um, so yeah, that's 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 part of it. I'll let her point finish because I really listen to what you're saying. Chill, chill. <laughs> you want to have a conversation. Is. It's two ways, darling. <laughs> you're gonna die. You're gonna have a turn after. Don't worry. You got this. Go right. on, David. Land and then, and Lisa. When he lands, you take the plane off. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm also having a hard time hearing you guys. My, that's I'm okay. on my phone, so I can't really like. But yeah, sorry. Go ahead. That's gotcha. Right. So as I was saying, I was saying that because black men don't have the same power as white men in, in our society, I don't think it's fair necessarily to put them on the same chopping block because they don't have the same access to resources. They don't have the same uh, power over culture as much as white men do, right? So I hear what you're saying. However, I don't think it's necessarily a one-to-one. -one. I under I understand your your aspect of like, okay, rap music is probably the most, one of the greatest parts of uh, our culture. And we actually recently talked about that. However, it's not the only aspect of our music and how we relate to one another. It is one aspect, but it is not the only aspect. We have plenty of other sources of music in which we do uplift one another, in which we do uh, highlight. It's just not highlighted 
in mainstream because that's not what makes the most money right now. So that doesn't okay. mean that we don't uplift each other. That doesn't mean that we aren't trying to do our part. It's just not highlighted as much because it doesn't make as much money these days. Right. So I hear your talking points. I'm just not sure if it applies across the board. OK, let me let me apply it, because with that line of reasoning, if you're going to render what in my mind should be a warrior class of men, if you're going to render them ineffective and useless, you're you're effectively rendering them as ineffective as children, because if other groups of subjugated and oppressed people can uphold their own beauty standards in their own communities and best believe other groups of men can't go around degrading them because they already hold their own women to standards. Asian men, for one, um, Hispanics. It was not a. So let me let me let me just come in come in there pause in there right. There's a point that she made about people upholding beauty standards. You go to India. White supremacy has infiltrated there. Go to China. The lighter you are, the better. Okay. Go to Africa. The same thing. You go to any of these continents and you start to realize white supremacy has been about it, right? Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's important to understand that this, <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm, let me not even, you know, discuss our points because we're discussing, I'm discussing in terms of the overall energy, but white supremacy permeates not just the black community. Wherever you go, right, you're going to see colorism, there, wherever white folk have been, so we don't even say white folk, that is really bad. Let me say the West, Western supremacy of white supremacy, okay? When they go anywhere, they start telling people what the standard of beauty is, right? And and so, and, uh, and Nita, yeah, Euro, Eurocentric beauty, okay, yeah? permeates pretty much all continents. It is not just black folk. It's not just American black. It's not British, just British black. It's in, listen, you go to, I was I was dealing with someone, I think it's, is it Bangladesh? It might have been Bangladesh, I think it might have been. But, uh, they, sorry, let me just say, the, the, is a, there's a, I think it might be Bangladesh community, but I might be misquoting it. But they, they I was talking to someone from the Asian community, right? Um, I think it was Bangladesh, and they were talking about um, they were talking about how uh, even they they have a caste system, right? They have a caste system, right? The caste system, okay, is that the lighter you are, they seem to put you on a higher pedestal. I spoke to a lady said, "Listen, she can't marry somebody of a particular caste." Please don't pretend the stiff Eurocentric beauty standards doesn't permeate every single culture. It's not just black, right? So yes, colorism exists in our culture. I agree. It exists everywhere. The colonizer has been busy, okay? This colonizer has been very busy. Sorry, it's Hinduism. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, RFS. It's Hinduism. Apologies, right? It is everywhere. It is not just in our uh, black community. China, who is a huge power, they themselves too, the lights are the better. They, 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 it doesn't make sense. Even China, who's a huge power, you see it there. Why? Because they have infiltrated every single ideology, it seems. But, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I, again, that and, and, and that itself, and what people don't realize is Black men and black women, just being black, you are at the bottom, right? Like, listen, even you, we, we see it all the time, right? We, we see you guys know this already. Even in the Asian community, they don't respect us because they're closer to white than we are, right? They're closer to white than we are, but then they come to our country and do what they do. We seemingly are the bottom of the market and the totem pole. This is this is across the board. L listen. It's not just black in America. It's not black in Europe. It's black in Brazil. It's black in Africa. It's black wherever you're black. You seem to be at the bottom. That tells me that what we're dealing with is not just a, a system that is in America. It is spiritual. It is across the freaking board. Right? It's across the board. Right? It's across the board. It's across the board. It's a thank you. It's a global issue, right? But there are within that 
there are aspects to us as black people and if and, and rightly so there are black men within the community who do not want to work there are black men who want to sponge off women there are black men who don't know how to be faithful i'd probably argue that's a larger community but there, there are black people that do a whole heap of stuff that are not productive for the community the difference being we don't have the leverage right earlier on in that debate that we had we spoke about um, and Corey brought up a very great question he said should black people be should black people sh should black people even doing uh comedy that is disrespectful to us we had an open discussion for instance oh uh for instance let's say for instance someone might say what should we have world star hip hop it's degrading it's uh you know it's 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 it shows the black community in a very uh you know very negative light right and everything like that right and so we discussed it and said oh no no do you know what i i personally think i see what you're saying because we need structural power but I, I can also understand the other side and da, da, da. and we had this conversation open field now we might have had different ideas but we had an open we had an open discussion right and, and, and some people will say no we shouldn't some people say no, we shouldn't. Some people say no to Shade's room as well. I would say to you, listen, be, before Shade's room, before Shade's room, there's magazines out there. Listen, white folk have the exact same thing. It's just not called Shade's room. They have magazines. They have newspaper tabloids. When it comes to gossip, we are not the forerunners. Okay, we're just forerunners on social media. It seems like they have their publications. They will publish a news article. Listen. They will listen in UK alone with what we've seen in terms of racism. Let me tell you something. The gossip that they listen, newspaper, a national newspaper can print just because a man's got a gun tattoo on his leg and he's black. They will print it and say, a uh, uh, black man, uh, black man. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what the, the, the liner was. Black man does da, 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 da. it was mad. At point, if you guys know an artist called Stormzy, they linked him to a footballer and said, Oh, Stormzy's this. And it wasn't Stormzy, it was a footballer. Listen, let me tell you something about structural power. This is why we're saying that this that the issue is wider than just black men pick up your sticks and go out there. Black men get get strong and get out there. And yet you know by your own history, especially black Americans know things like Tulsa, you know what happens. We we you, you know what happens. So black men have got up and stood up before. Right? Things come in waves. Right? Things come in waves. Right, you're, you're, you, you, especially black Americans, you can really testify to this, right? Where you've seen black men in your history, recent, have a whole community and white folk will come and burn that stuff down. It's not like black men ain't trying. It's not like black men ain't trying. You never needed every black man to do the thing. In, in, in a society, you never need every black man to do something. You just need you just need the ones that are influential to do the thing. Right? So at the moment, you're right. We can do more. I believe as black men, we can do more. I, you're right. I think we can do more. Right? We can do more. Right? We can do more. So someone will say, someone, and, and this is something that I was talking to someone else about, you know, um, I was talking to someone else about, which was Malcolm X and and um martin luther king right i said martin luther king right martin luther king yeah himself right needed malcolm x and malcolm x needed martin luther king because the strategies were different but they needed to have one another without malcolm x it makes martin luther king look like a saint it's, and, and he doesn't look like Martin Luther King will not look like a saint without Malcolm X. Right? He doesn't look like a saint without Malcolm X. Because Malcolm X was like, listen, I'm I'm on about action. I'm not, I'm not about that nonsense. I'm about listen, I'm gonna do things. If men are saying, let's do it, I'm gonna do the thing. I'm not about to chat and do kumbayas and telling Jesus, Jesus has come today, we're gonna move. That's Malcolm X, right? So White people could find Martin Luther King more palatable because now Malcolm X is volatile. War is not one with one strategy. 
War is one with multiple strategies and it takes time and it takes season, right? And there are waves that come along with the process, right? So when we're talking about how black people are moving, we are moving. We're just not moving with the, the speed that we want to see, right? We, we're, we are moving with a pace, but we're not moving at the pace that we want. But these two are need Martin Luther King and, Ma and Malcolm X were needed, but the FBI hated both of them. <laughs> In all honesty, they hated both of them. They didn't really care, right? They didn't really care, right? Um, you know, so so you know, there there are there are there are need for both for example. But anyway, um, so let me let me let me continue. Anyway, so um, uh, let's continue the, the little chat thing here. Uh, before I open it up, and uh, let me go to forwards. I want to pinpoint this part here too, uh, and I've, I've made this mistake too. I've made this mistake too, so I know what it is. All right, so I'm gonna listen to this. Other groups of subjugated and oppressed people can uphold their own beauty standards in their own communities, and best believe, other groups of men can't go around degrading them because they already hold their own women to standards. Asian men, for one, um, Hispanics. It was not a race, but an ethnicity for for uh, for another. Other groups of men won't allow you to come over here and say anything you want about their women. You can't go up in their uh, communities and have your way with it. You cannot do it. So if you're, if you're with that line of reasoning, if you're saying, well, we just don't have any power. So if you are a powerless group of men, we don't have to choose you. We, why, why would we choose you if you are a powerless group of men? You're, uh, you're as useless as a nipple on my elbow. I don't need it. You, uh, the point is you have control, you have autonomy, you have power. Rap, rap, just because, who tells you to write the lyrics that you write in, in terms of, of, of the rap music and, and the culture? No one's, no one's putting a gun to their head. It's not a white man saying, hey, write about this. They write on their own volition. They put out what they want to put out, their turncoats and they're selling out, but they're getting the money. And even the ones who are affluent, you can look at the NBA, you can look at rappers, you can look at anybody, any black man of means, they're dating foreign women anyways. Majority of the time, that's what they're doing. So they're not upholding black women anyways. So let's be, let's please be honest. This is not a group of men that does not have any power, any control, any autonomy. If they wanted to pull their resources together and own the NBA, guess what they could do? They could own their own talent and their athleticism if they wanted to. If they wanted to own record labels, it's supply and demand. They want to own record labels. They have autonomy. They have money. They could pool their resources and figure it out. That's the reality. But the reality is it's probably a little bit easier to be turncoats and to sell out to, to the culture's detriment and to your community and your people's detriment. That's the reality. That's what's been happening. That's what's continuing to happen. And if you're not going to hold their feet to the fire, you specifically, um, David, if you're not going to hold their feet to the fire and hold them accountable, you're you're rendering them useless. You're saying, well, there's nothing they can do. You know, the white man won. We got to do what they say. We don't need you. What can we do with you? What is the point? We're not going to, we shouldn't choose you. You should not be chosen. If That's I may jump reality. in now. Before, before you say anything, no, before you say anything. If you uh, want to ask a, I just want to ask one Go question. Ahead. And, and Lisa, do you want to win today or do you want us to hear what you're saying? No, I'm 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 quite frankly, uh, simple I'm exhausted question. With do this you want us to hear what you're saying? No, 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 of course. Men. Bring the strength down in the room. Bring the strength down in the room. Bring the strength down in the room. And Elisa, do you want us to hear your point or do you want to win? This is not about winning or losing. You guys are here. You guys overstand what I'm saying, right? Okay, it's not about winning or losing. Black men are already losing. It's not about winning or losing. Hold on, hold. So, uh, part of that, part of it, I'm going to let it play in a second again. Part of it, what I was, why it was became a problem is when you start using the words "you," that instantly becomes accusatory. And at that point, you're actually really not really having a conversation. You're trying to push. Them. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? At that point, what you're now doing is now trying to you're trying to agitate the person. It's like we're having a discussion, and we're saying you, well, you did, and I'm like, yo, listen, my guy, relax. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you, you gotta you gotta bring it down, bruv, because the conversation was never getting that hype. Nobody was that hype. We were never that hype. You know what I'm saying? We were never that hype, right? See, you want 
if you want black a black man in this context of her conversation that she's talking about, right? As she's talking, you want him to be able to um okay. Um if you if you want to be able to have uh the conversation so you want to get the black man on the panel to uh listen to what you're saying, right? And and then and and move with that, right? Saying you are it's not going to help people. And this I'm pointing it out because it's little but it's big. It's all part of the language. It's all part of the, the, the overall structure of what you bring to the conversation. It's not small. It, it's, it's small on its own. But as a, as, a, as, a, as a body of work, this then becomes an attack. Right? Do you know what I'm saying? Right? And, and, you, and, and the thing is, women, black women, you know what this is like. Because you're on red pill and you do the exact same thing. Right? But, I, I, you know, and, and again, those who are saying that she made a point, you're right, she did. Black, red pill make good points. But do you agree with them? You don't because their delivery is way off and you don't want to agree with them. That's what we're talking about. As soon, as soon as someone makes points in that particular energy, nobody wants to be able to listen to you. Even when you're on red pill and they're making solid points, you won't hear it. Kevin Samuel makes some solid points. You won't hear it because you don't like the delivery of what he said. Right. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like it, sometimes you can be talking truth. Sometimes you can be talking truth, but the way you're delivering it, nobody wants to hear it. And therefore, actually, it's lost. Right. Then it's lost. Right. Um, let's go on. Before we started the conversation, it was never this hype. It was a very calm conversation. You've taken the energy up a hundred. I get that you're frustrated, but as you soon don't. as you do how that, how could you possibly get it? You don't get it. Well, it, let let me let me jump in. We're not trying I to have do, an argument I today. It. I do get it as a black. We're trying to have a conversation, and I always I, talk I'm about this. I'm conversing. I'm conversing with you're, a little bit more. At the moment, you're more, not. At the moment, you're I'm not. A, I'm a little bit more verbose. I have a little bit more passion, and I'm a little bit more frustrated. You guys are, can sit here and be passive and be docile because you're That's being what I'm dishonest. Talking about right there. When you're pause, being pause, dishonest. pause. No, no. This is a good moment. This is a good moment. This is a good moment. This is exactly what we're talking about yeah. right now. What you're trying to do is win. Oh my and god! We're and we're trying to have a what conversation. Am what am I winning? Can you please? Can you tell me what I'm? Uh, you have two ears and one win? mouth, but right now you're not doing that. Listen. No, but what am I winning? What do I, I need I stand to listen, to Anissa? Chill. Okay, no, chill. I'm going to calm down. I just want you to tell me. It is the language. What do you're I stand using? to gain chill. and win? Chill. I'm, I want you to listen. That's what I'm asking you to I'm do, chill, right? But tell Call me what I'm going to win, Because if I'm I am going to win something, I want to know what I stand to win. What I'm am I winning? Say, I'm going to say it one more time. Just listen to what we're saying. Bring the energy down. We're not. Okay, I'm not saying I'm you calm. can't be punished, cool. right? I'm calm. But the the language you're even using, it's no longer about discussion. You're trying to almost break people. And I'm like, listen, we're trying to hear what you're saying. But right now, you've turned it into an argument. It's not an argument. It's a conversation. This I'm, I'm not trying points. to break anybody down. That's my vernacular. That's okay. just the, the, that's my lexicon. Those are the words that I use. Okay. Well, if I can jump in now, while no, it takes it. Go, go for it. Um, so I hear some of the points she's making, and they are solid points, but it's not so far down the scale. So I have seven brothers, and they're exactly what I would want in a black man. So I right. don't want to generalize and paint all black men one color. Are there men who are behaving like that? On the main, on the on the stage, yes, they are. But there are a lot of black men doing the right thing. So if we focus on the black men that are doing the wrong thing, not necessarily on the panel today, there are various reasons I can look at. I'm not making excuses for them, but it helps me understand what's going on. First of all, do I think they have power? Some of them have power, but if you really, when we start talking about this word trauma, like what they've been through, if they've been, you know, customized to believe something, there's something wrong with them. But it's us. I guess almost kind of accusing and telling, calling them weak doesn't make it different. It just, it's just like one fact here and one fact there and they never meet. A lot of these men who may not protect us, a lot of these men who may not see the value in us really are not worth anything to us anyway. But what we do want to do is make other people aware as to why they're acting that way. So if somebody else from another race, let's say it's somebody who is white, who's looking in, we can explain to them that yes, there are some black men who may not protect us. Yes, there are some black men who may not see the value in a fellow black woman. But I don't want to generalize 
being that I have brothers, being that I have a father who's now dead, who I know who didn't behave like that. So there are men who are doing the right thing. But the question now is, are there enough black men who are doing the right thing? And those that aren't doing the right thing, the question is not just to criticize them, but really, why is this going on? What is going on in our society today? Because I feel what's happening now is, Annelise, I feel your passion. I feel your conversation. I see where you're coming from. But what happens when you come like that? It isolates us. And we simply have a point in isolation. And we can never meet in the middle. And so we can be talking like this till the end of time and still not meet. Because the purpose of this conversation is for us to understand each other and figure out where do we go from here. My daughter is 19. I don't want her stuck going through what I've been through. I don't want her stuck going through what other people have been through. I want her to see something that has evolved. And what happens is when you get evolved is when you finally have a conversation like this where people are understanding each other. Because I'm not necessarily saying that we have to end up with a black person. We don't. But what we do want is some respect. Because the truth is, do I hear other communities or other men, Asian men or white men, or you know, Puerto Rican men say that, oh, I have a preference? We don't hear them. I haven't heard them say that, but we do have black men say, oh, I have a preference. So the question now is, how do you get there? How does a black man say, oh, I have a preference for somebody other than what I look like or other than what my mother looks like? That would be the question. But I, I think if we begin to label them as weak, they have no strength. That doesn't tell us anything. That simply just gives them a label, but we're still where we started from. And I don't want that. I want results for my children. Lola, I, first of all, I never said that black men are weak. I, the reason that I'm being so hard on them is because I do believe that they can produce more than they're producing. I believe that they, they have the capacity. I believe that they should be doing it and they're simply choosing not to. This is another issue that I have specifically with black women because it, it, it really it is an indictment. Black women, to your own detriment, you will say they black men have been through things. They have struggled. Uh, they, uh, the, you know, the plantation and slavery. I know nothing and, about and, the, and the prison to I don't know. The school I can, to prison I can, pipeline. I hold on, hold on. No, 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 because when you're saying we have to understand we, we, what you're doing is Crystal, let what let you're doing let is you are other. negating black women's pain because here, I'm here, a black woman and I'm talking black about my pain. On the but I can't black also men. Lola, Lola, black Lola, women were required to take let care alone, of alone. their babies, their slave, their slave owners' babies. The, Black women were there too. We have suffered as well. I don't understand this this line. Of the, it's a fine line of gradation when you have the conversation about what black men have been through and trying to understand it. Black women have been through the same things. I would say black women being women are more vulnerable simply because we're women. We are women. We are at the mercy of every group of men on the planet. We are women. That's the reality. We were at the mercy of white men and black men. It, slavery and pre-slavery and post-slavery. That's the reality. Why are you negating what black women have been through? Why are you focusing on black men and saying, hey, well, the point of the conversation is to try to understand why black men are dating white women. You're negating what black women have been through. You're negating what they continue to go through. That That's the reality. And I I, I really feel like it's, it's, a, it's a very... It's not manipulative, but it's extremely dismissive of everything that black women have had to endure because black women have endured the same, if not more, because they're women. Women and children are more vulnerable by default. That's the, that's the way that the world works. It's patriarchy. That's the way it works. And we have been able to transcend. Black women are the most educated, the most entrepreneurial. We are doing what we need to do. We are taking care of the community. We are taking care of our kids. When the absentee men leave, it's black women holding the bag. That's the reality. So no, they're not getting a pass. It's not, they need to understand. So you know, oh, Annalisa, can we just- at a point where they don't understand. Annalisa. I don't understand why black men are interracially dating. Who doesn't Annalisa. understand on this panel? So she talks about intersectionality, which is a really solid point. No one disagrees. But you doubt uh, you see, you see, you see, when you're when you're when you're getting when you're now, like I said, Lola was agreeing with her points, but she was only saying that she under she's trying to see both sides, right? She wanted to see both sides, right? That's what Lola said, what she wanted to see both sides, right? But she doesn't want Lola to see both sides. 
she wants Lola to be exclusively on a, on black women's side, right? And that in itself is the issue, right? That in itself is the issue, right? Because you have a fellow black woman saying she's trying to understand what we're saying so we can have a dialogue, right? So we can have a conversation, right? And you want to drag her to the other side but because she's because she's explaining that there's two parties being hurt here, you've got to drag her to the other side, right? Now, I, and I said I said about this the other I said this about the other, the other earlier on. Sorry, yesterday when I was doing the live, I said there are you know <laughs> uh, in in this in this game we're talking about, right? In this game we're talking about, right? Black men, yes, are leaders. You know, black men are leaders. Black men, uh, you know, have the ability to affect their community. I agree with all of that. And I'm not even disagree with that at all. So we were on the same page. You know, we're on the same page. Um, and black women, do they have it harder? Yes, because of intersectionality, which is what she was explaining, right? The fact that they're not only just a woman, they're not only uh, black, but they are black women. And so the, the plight of black women is completely different. Okay. Now, being the most, uh, from if I, I, I don't want to misquote. I don't want to, in fact, I'm not going to misquote. I'm not going to misquote, right? I'm not going to misquote. Um. When we talk about stats, she said black women are most educated and the most entrepreneurial. Now, being educated doesn't mean that you're going to be the best for your community, first and foremost. But number two, being the most entrepreneurial, what does that mean? Right? It sounds good. But what does that mean? And what are the stats around that? Right. When we said that black men are married at, at 30, 83 percent, she was like, well, is, is that is that I saw the comments. Is that biracial? Is that women? People that identify as black? Da, da, da. As soon as the stat came up, people want to throw it away. But as soon as the stat now backs and says women are most educated, <laughs> nail it. She's going to be on it. Right. And that's why I said and that's why I said I know it means business. Uh, Shorty the whoop. That's not what I'm saying. And that's what and that's why I said that anecdotally has to balance with stats. Right? Anecdotally has to balance with stats. You you have to balance the two. You have to balance the two. Yes, we know I, I actually I knew what I knew what entrepreneurial uh starting up first, obviously. I meant as in what does it mean though? You're starting up businesses or so. You could be the fastest person to start a business. So does that mean you're successful? Does that mean that your business has last? What, what does that mean? Right? So, so what, what does that what does that what does that mean at the finishing line? That's that's what I'm trying to say. If, if thank you, who makes the most money? Right? Now that would have been a better stat, right? Because you can start as many businesses as you want. You can have five for all I care. But if you don't make it to the finishing line, so we needed that, we needed that stat. Right. So we can get an understanding to say if what she's saying is so true, because if the percentages and again, I haven't researched, I'm not going to say it said if the percentages show that women don't make more than men, then your argument is still flawed because you can make as many businesses as you want. Right. You can have as many businesses as you like. But then the, the stats are showing that men have more. So what, what? So then your argument about women are doing the most. According to stats, wouldn't it be true. But again, because it's anecdotally has to match up also with the stats. Stats on its own can be very deceiving. So we go with also anecdotally as well. And that works also the other way around for when black people, black men are talking about when we're dealing with black women in, in that financial sector, right? You know what I'm saying? A, a, another good question here too. What do we do with our finances when we have it? There are so many different aspects of this. So we're using these these things, right? These things to try and qualify, uh, you know. Uh, uh, yes, a lot of black women are high earners. A lot of black women are high earners. Are there more than black men? That's the question I'm asking. Right? It, it, it again, that's the point. So if more women are starting business, but if you're starting and failing and you don't have the money at the end, what is it? 
You see, you're glorifying starting something and using that as a barometer to bash black men on the head. And I'm telling you, but at the end, what does it mean? That's that's why I'm saying that's what I'm saying to you. We have to look at we have to look at from another perspective. That's not the only story. That that's not the only story, right? You starting a business doesn't mean you're going to earn more than someone else, right? That, that, that's the whole point I'm trying to make you understand. See, that this is why we're having this issue, right? And so now there's an age gap between men and women. Yeah, there is. There is an age gap between the two of them. There, there's, there, sorry, a uh, wage gap between the two of them, right? Which is why I'm saying you have to take all of it all into consideration because what's happening is we're using, right? We're using, okay, all right? We're using certain stats, right? And, and then we we use it to form a narrative. So uh, I'm saying to you that we have to have a broader aspect of stats to come into play to create the narrative. That's why I said I don't have the stats. And I asked the question, what does it mean? That, that That's why I'm asking, what does it mean? Right? What does it mean? That That's why I'm trying to say that. So you can deliver it in one way. And put point the stat in a certain way, and it will look certain a certain way, right? Exactly, Tussin, right? Again, the, this is what I'm saying. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, he said, my panelist alone has more educated, high earning women than men. We're doctors, lawyers, and PhD students in space. I don't know how you know that. <laughs> I don't know how you know that, but you, you flow. Um, you know, uh, and so this is what I'm this is what I'm saying. Like, so th there's an overall conversation that has to happen with if we're saying a stat has to bring in a general consensus of the stat so we can understand it fully. Just saying that black women start a business more or thingy and more educated means that they're already doing more than black men. It doesn't mean that because you, you we don't know where you spend your money. We don't know how much you earn. We don't know any of that stats. That wasn't addressed anyway. But that's what I'm trying to say. So that, what I'm saying is having that conversation should be more than just, oh, this, that, this, that, those particular stats. There has to be an overallness to bring to us that. That's what I'm kind of saying, right? Um, you know, uh, you know, that's what, that's what I'm kind of saying here. Uh, last point, and then I'm, I'm going to bring on, I'm going to bring on Max and then, um, you know, uh, get that aspect there. Uh, um, okay, so this is uh, okay. So the, the last part, I think, where I I I just lost I lost patience. I had done I'd done enough. I was tired. All right, I said said no more. Uh, you know. Um. So we said I think like we were actually getting answers from Crystal and I couldn't wait to hear something from Lola but then you came on here and it, it seemed like you just kept on attacking and I still don't think that we actually have any solutions as a result of going back and forth which is the, what you were talking about we just keep we're doing this swirling drain and we're not actually getting to a solution we just keep going back and forth in an argumentative manner that's not productive right now so if you could present some solutions for both black women black men and black women to be able to come to a consensus on how we can move forward and not go down this drain that you're talking about. I would like to hear it genuinely. Okay. That's fine. I've, I already know the narrative that you guys have, like I, I am who I am and I, I'm Darling, very confident. I need you to go straight. No, 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 no. Wait. I, I really, I'm not offended. Please. I don't care, but let me answer please. your question. First of all, you shouldn't be asking women to come up with a solution to a problem that men created. That, that that's the that you see that's the first problem that I have in my thank you. Listen, I'm wow. Trying. Look, there's times and seasons when you have to just say, listen, it's enough is enough, right? I give it opportunity, I'm not gonna mess around. And I I I, I ended the call, I ended the I ended the life for her at that point, right? I was tired. All right. Uh she was gonna go around in circles and I couldn't bother to do it. Just answer the question straight, and that was it. Be done, right? Because it was too much. Like you you you've been doing too much. Um, you know, and we had done it for an hour. So, you know, I had to just release her from the, the situation because we weren't having an effective conversation. What, what it started being was about having a fight, right? Um, you know, and, and, and that, that's exactly what we don't want to have, you know. 
and I was tired of it. You know, I was like, yo, you, you, you're doing too much. Answer the question direct. The question was, what's the solutions? I already know what narrative you're about to paint. Da, 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 da. No, he didn't say that. He said, what, what is the solutions? It's not for black women. Then why are you talking? If it's not for black women to come up with a solution, go out. If it's not for black women to come up with a solution, keep quiet and leave the conversation. Because it's not for black women to come up with a solution. It's for us as black men to figure it out. Keep quiet and get out. Right? It's, it's, it's not for black women to be having the conversation and, and, and actually give any solution. So why are we talking? Keep quiet and get out and let us do it. Do you see what I'm saying? Right? But it's a community. It affects the community. It, it affects it affect both the parties are being affected. Women are now in the workspace, okay, just like we are. Right, the 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 life we're living affects both men and women, and and both parties can come to the table to discuss and have a discussion about some of the solutions that are going on. Right, it's it'd be ignorant to think that, for instance, our civil rights movement, right, only had men talking with men. I'm sure I, I can we can almost be sure through the histories how women have been involved their peace. Maybe not all the history because some history is a peak. You know, some men wouldn't let them speak. Right. Like if, if, if you if you want to complain about if you want to complain that black men are not coming to solutions. My baby, why are you in a conversation? Let the black men speak then, because we were having our conversation. Why get involved? Right. Why? Why get involved? Right. And this whole conversation started with the fact that we were saying, do black men date black women? And the only stat we ever had was that they did. But there was a large portion of men that didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. Again, that would need more stats around that to give us a bit more of a better understanding, a better, a better overall picture. Um, you know what I mean as well. So we have to look at that particular aspect as well. Um, is there another stats around that that can also help us gain a better clarity in terms of do black men date black women? Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Let me get uh, Max on. Uh, let me get Max on. Who's having a conversation? Max, you there? I'm here, man. What are you saying, Max? Hey, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Thank you, sis, for being patient. I appreciate you still. No, that's fine. Hey, Kojo. Hey, chat. Hey, everyone. I'm just coming in and out. It is <clears throat> crazy o'clock over in the UK. So um, just making a couple points and heading off. So, mm. sis and Alicia, um, I'm not here to Ill illegitimize any of her points. I actually liked a lot of what she had to say, but I, I think there's more to what you say than what you say. It's about how you say it. It's about the context of the conversation and so many other things that you can't minimize just because you're making a good point. So the first thing is about purpose that Lala identified. So I want us to imagine that Kojo and I are walking to deliver a glass vase it's a really expensive vase, really important vase, and I drop the vase. Now, Kojo holds me accountable, and he starts berating me. You dropped the vase. You shouldn't have dropped the vase. It's an expensive vase. Okay, great. Now, there's glass all over the floor. That's unresolved. There's also someone expecting the glass vase. They don't get it. That's unresolved. So what I need us to understand is that accountability must be accompanied with resolution. Mm. We can't just keep coming on the mic and saying, I'm holding people accountable. No, because in the meanwhile, a lot is going unresolved. And that's why the conversation was supposed to be solution focused, solution based. And when we lose that end goal and that ideology that we're, we're actually moving towards a solution, accountability only takes the conversation so far. So I think that that was in itself one of the issues that was experienced in that live. And then it's something else that you alluded to before, the idea of being right versus being correct. Being right is just a factual thing, right? So mm. yes, her information was correct, fantastic. Or her information was right, let me not <laughs> mix up the terms, her information oh, yeah. was right. Yeah. But the concept of being correct is considering circumstances, contextualizing things, thinking about your delivery, thinking about the outcome thinking about the purpose. And when we minimize these things, when we overlook them, then it boils down to what you said to her. Are you trying to win today? Are you trying to be right? Because that's all that's coming across. All that's being communicated is a desire to win. But 
when you win, the whole community is going to lose because mm. you could have used this moment to educate and to bring us along. And yes, yeah, she can say, fine, like, it's not my point to educate you. You need to self-educate. Fine, I hear it. But like you said, that particular conversation was for that purpose. So if you didn't come into that space wanting to contribute to building it up, there was no point in coming. You know, there's that Bible verse, he that doesn't gather with me scatters. That was a key experience where you just needed to gather or not be about. That was it. The group were gathering. So if you're not going to come together, you're going to be scattering. It's best for you not to enter that space. Then speak into the idea of tone. So I'm Yoruba and that's a tribe in Nigeria. And the language is a tonal language. It's and what that Yoruba. means is depending <laughs> on how you say it, it changes the meaning. Your mm. tone changes the meaning of the word. Why am I saying that? Because tone, even outside of that language and that culture, has that influence. Tone changes meaning. And so when we're looking at what someone is saying, their tone is a massive part of the conversation. And if someone's tone is inappropriate, yes, it does undermine. And yes, it will call for you to interject. Yes, it will call for someone to correct it. Yes, it will call for, for it to be responded to. So while we want to appreciate the validity of what she's saying, the packaging has to be acknowledged. The packaging has to also be synonymous to, what, to the value of what she's bringing. Otherwise, the whole thing gets left behind. And if she was considering the outcome of what she was doing, then I think she could have adjusted it. But to have the mindset of, I don't care, this is high, um, all of those things there, okay, well, effectively, you've lost your message then for the purpose of you remaining who you are and an authentic to, to how you want to be, you've lost an opportunity to further your message. So for me, that makes me question, how committed are you to that cause? If you can't just simply adjust what you're saying for the purpose of people being able to receive it, who maybe are sensitive, who are maybe less educated for whatever reason, then you've lost that group of people. You've lost that opportunity. You've lost this platform. How committed to that message, to that cause, are you? You know, these are things you have to think about. A um, couple more things. In the UK, and it's a pretty much similar system wherever you are in the world, there's a postal system, right? And to post something, you need an address. Otherwise, it gets lost in circulation. If you do not come into a conversation knowing who you are addressing, it's going to get lost in circulation. We're just going to go round and round and round. So it would have been better for her, even though she said, oh, I came here to talk to, I think it was Corey or to address David or whatever. It was better for her to have thought in this space, can I effectively address someone? Can I actually make a difference? Can I contribute to that? I think that was the missing part of her analysis before she jumped on the call. Yes, she definitely had something to say. Yes, there was value in what she said. But she didn't think about, is this the context where I can really deliver it, where I can allow it to be delivered and not just lost in circulation? So we as people, each of us, have to consider that. When I enter this space, am I able to deliver this? If not, let me leave it at home because it's a valuable package and I can't afford for it to get lost in circulation. So it's just about knowing your audience because effectively, just because there's a message, it doesn't make you the messenger. right? That is consistently what we see. A lot of people are informed, doesn't give them the qualifications to share the information. So it's just about remembering, okay, am I qualified for this? Not qualified as in, do I know the facts, but do I have the skill set to do it justice? And um, yeah, so that's, that's really it for me. Mm. Yo, Max, you know what? Sometimes, you know, the messenger it's even more important. Like the way you just dropped it, shoot, you could have saved me an hour and a half. <laughs> you could have saved me an hour and what? For an hour and 35 minutes. You did that in like what? Five minutes? Broke that down differently. Differently. I, I don't even know. I don't have anything to even add on that. You broke it down differently. And I, I, I you know what? Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. Like, 
there was so much that she was saying I was like yes yes but no no <laughs> you know so it was kind of it was it was kind of a, a bittersweet moment um I don't know if you can if your arm can be twisted to ever have her back yeah no. why not okay cool not? okay cool. I'd rather have it in a one-to-one capacity oh, oh okay yeah one-to-one capacity let's have a talk let's have a conversation okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I did Fair message. Enough. I've already, I've, I've let everybody know. So I, I, I'm, on, I'm an open book. I've messaged her already. I've emailed her. Said, hey, we'd love to have a one-to-one conversation. With you. Whether it's offline, online, I don't mind. You choose. Mm. I don't like the conversation. Let's see how mm-hmm. committed you are. Really, do you know what I mean? I want to get to know you because I think that helps to kind of see where someone's coming from. So if we do it offline, I don't mind. Let's have it offline. You know what I'm saying? Let's have a conversation offline if that's a bit easier for you, right? I'd, I'll do that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If if you want to do that way, if you want to do it online, cool. But I'm, you know, I'm gonna get to know you. Mm-hmm. So, mm. I mean, that, that's fair. That's fair. I think I think her message is for the masses. I don't think it's just for like a private conversation. But I think the next step for you guys <laughs> may just be that one to one, as you mm. said, depending on what she what she wants. But yeah, man, I just I wanted to hear more of her, but it just it wasn't the right space. And I wish we would stop doing that to ourselves. I wish we would stop misplacing ourselves and then wondering why we're disappointed. Like, let's use wisdom in every step so that we can be effective in whatever mission we set out, you know, set out with. So, yeah, basically. Mm, love for that, man. Yeah. Ooh, Max coming in with that strength. I oh, appreciate it, Max, man. Um, you know what, fam? Obviously, listen, 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 listen. You know, you've been listening for the last hour and hour 45. So do you know what? Let me, let me, you know, open it up for a little bit. I'm not doing anything tonight. So let me open up. If you're all still awake, there's 292 of you guys. And many of you have got opinions, you know. Um, you know, you want to come and have your say. Maybe you have a different point of view. Uh, let me, you know, let me put the email there for you guys. There were some people that hit me up yesterday as well that wanted to have a say as well on this topic. If you still want to have your say on this uh, please email me as well. Um, I do have, I think I have Olivia Watford, JC Charles, Sholene, Jamal, Misty, Winston, Kay, Lillian, uh, yeah, a few people who wanted to come in and who yesterday night wanted to have to say, listen, I put an email there. If you want to, if you want to come and have your say, listen, uh, someone said, have I packed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've packed, I've packed, I've packed. Um, you know, uh yeah man it, it, you know i want to i want to open up and maybe you have a, a different point of view uh, uh it's uh yeah it's a lot it's a lot so if you email me now on this email i should be able to see it. i'm looking at the thing now so i should be able to see it just give me an email if you want to come in and, and have your say um uh, you know maybe you have a different opinion t- uh to to talk about this because originally this was actually meant to be um it was a men's conversation it was a men's uh talk that we opened up to the ladies to, to also get a bit of their opinion um but yeah it was it was like i said there were still some productive conversations that were going on so i'm not i'm not i'm not cussing there were still some productive conversations um there were some productive points that were being made so let's 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 get some some viewpoints on and see what people are saying mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This topic is a tight one, boy. Um, uh, Max, you still there? I am for a little bit. What's up? Um, you uh, maybe you can give a bit, of, shed a bit of light on the UK um scene because we oftentimes we have the American we have the American perspective, but on the UK on the UK circuit in terms of uh our dating system, mm. um. Do we see a, a a great exodus when it comes to? Oh, are you are you based in London yourself, isn't it? Uh, not in London at the moment, no. But oh, okay. really born in London, spent a lot of time. Okay, there. so you, you, like myself, you grew up in London, so we we grew up in the melting pot. Um, okay, so like I mean, for your for your maybe your observation, like, um, what's your kind of thoughts in regards to uh, this kind of topic in terms of um, black men dating? outside of our community in a UK perspective? Mm, I mean, definitely growing up, there was that stigma. Um, mm. Yeah, there were a lot of mixed-race children, white mums, um, mm. black dads. There was. 
and and it made a big difference at least mm. from black people's perspective if if black people knew oh you're mixed race but you have a white mom they'll look at you different from if you have a black mom um and your experience would be different usually um but i think where the conversations at today black women are not waiting mm. black women have have been dating outside of the race quite comfortably yeah. And yeah. in, in a way that's quite celebrated, um, mm. at least in the UK. So I think, yeah, the kind of um, loyalty that is in, in um, conversations in the American scene, it's hard to relate to. Um, mm. Black women here, they're not waiting. <laughs> yeah, they're not waiting. Um, and people can feel, feel, can feel how they want to feel about that. Mm. But... Um, there are a lot of other factors that I think should be part of the discussion. Um, but again, that could just be my UK perspective and also my, my faith perspective as well. Um, because that's mm. often a conversation that can get a bit dicey when someone will say, you need to marry black. And I'm like, okay, but what about Christ? Mm. <laughs> you know, like what, where's your affinity to, is it to, like the fact that someone has to be like grounded in their faith or are you more committed to the culture? And I don't believe, I'm not saying it has to be one or the other, but regardless, you have to have a priority. <laughs> um, so it, it's an interesting conversation when you add other factors such as religion into it, or even if you add in, if you come from a place, continent like Africa, if you add in tribes, that's a whole nother conversation. Mm. Yeah, culturally. Yeah. yeah, do you know what I mean? That's a whole nother conversation. Um, as in within black, when we're talking marrying black, that's really wide. There's there's way more nuance within that in itself. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely I'm, obviously because I um and again, I think everything is about perspective too, isn't it? Because um schooled in London myself, like yourself. Um, I went to an all white school in primary school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was like one of two black people. Right. And, you know, um, for me, you know, uh, dating, dating out, uh, do you know, I was just trying to get somebody to date me. <laughs> Let's keep it a buck. I was just trying to get someone to date me. All right. So, you know, um, that that had a lot to do with it at the beginning, right? Yeah. Then obviously going to secondary school, went to an all black school, but I went to church. I remember my church was all black as well, so you know I got a saw some ladies there and I was involved. But when I went to secondary school uh, and filled with just black women, um, not having any white women around me at that point, I think we had like two, three white people in our year alone, let alone the whole school. Probably probably like. It was probably 99% black, the school, right? Which I think, again, shifts or at least begins to push uh, uh, preferences Absolutely. at that young age. You know what I mean? It begins to yeah. push references at that young age of who you're looking at. And then going to university for us, mm -hmm. or into college and university, um, SFX was there. I didn't go to SFX, but SFX is one of those black colleges, right? You go to SFX. You will see some black folk, all right? Um, that's in the South, but and there's a, a few others as well, right? So there are, to, there are predominant black areas where an in institution we go to. Then there's university. Now, university is a very important part because you go to a university which is historically white, uh, especially if it's very um, celebrated for its educational piece. There are some people that will, f I don't want to say fold, but will open their horizons. Mm. I went to an all black university. Again, it mm -hmm. solidified the fact that I wanted to date black to a point where I didn't want to look anywhere else and it was just strictly black. You know what I mean? Um, for yeah. American, they were saying HSB, HBCUs. So yeah. those things really focus you into being about, I want to date this preference. I, I want to yeah. stay on the black side. But not everyone has those experiences. And, and also maybe people do have those experiences, but then in the midst of that, um, for men, especially, rejection is a very heavy piece. Um, mm -hmm. We are fragile in that area when it comes to reject uh, to rejection, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we are rejected in this area, when it comes to a woman rejecting you, and so what you see with certain some of the some of the um, people that have, I believe, that have dated, of course, some of the people that have dated, I believe, outside of race, have been because of pain and because of hurt, and then some people have self hate. 
you know? And you know that because when they speak about black women, what comes out of their mouth? Right. right? So you know that by the fruits. And mm-hmm. there are other black men who uh, culturally, again, I'm going to say this with a looseness, the monolith that's not a monolith of black culture seemingly seem to be outside of that black culture and then end up, it ends up being called your coconut or a Malteser, um, wow. bounty, you know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. they end up dating white women or white yep. men, right? Because they now feel that they have culturally aligned with yep. someone. So though they don't, they're not the same uh, ethnicity or even say race, they mm-hmm. can see that culturally they align in the way that they've grown up and what they've seen and what they like and da, 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 right. So there are some people, someone said Oreo, yes. And someone said, yeah, so there's some people that, yeah. also in that basket critically. The part that we're obviously discussing is really not that basket. We're discussing those who have decided to jump across the ship simply because they're hurt. Um, and 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 that's, a, a, for me, um, I, I've seen more black, and maybe because of the areas I've grown up in, I've seen far more black men with black women mm-hmm. than any other preferential mix. But I've also seen a large amount of black men with white women. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and a smaller amount of black women, black uh, women with white men, but it's growing now in this. Uh, I've yeah, seen it definitely start. Growing. I think similar to you. So I, though I was born in London, I wasn't raised in London. I was raised outside of London. And what that often means is you get to have that great experience of being the only black person or being the real minority within um, like the educational space. And that can be really traumatizing. I know you did speak to what rejection means to men, but I've had boys tell me directly to my face in my teens, mm. nobody's going to date you. <laughs> mm. and, and just stuff that's just blatant, stuff that is unapologetically rude or discriminatory or racist, just because they can. Like, who's going to defend you? Because even the black guys in school are all going after the white girls. So it is very hard at at that teen stage and very formative. But I decided when I was going to go to university, which is college in America, I'm going to somewhere black. (laughs) I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I don't have time. Like I'm ready to live my best life in a space that recognizes me. And and that's the case. When you go into those spaces, sometimes you're like, wow, there's a whole world out there where people will just acknowledge you for you and are able to recognize and appreciate your beauty. So yeah, I think trauma and not wanting to be the only black person does pay, play a big part in how we move and in the spaces we go into and in the preference that we form. I definitely think culture also plays a part in it as well, because I think you saying you grew up um, around predominantly black and black couples could mm. be the African influence. Yeah. Because yeah. that's very normal if you're coming yeah. from a community like aunties and uncles have married each other, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're speaking one language, they have a familiar culture. That's what has been, that's what they've been raised with. Um, but give it a couple of generations, especially in the UK, and that's going to look completely different. Mm, that's a real point. Mm, that's a real point. That's a real, real point. And I, I think that is a... Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a big problem because like I don't say big problem but it's there's a there's a you know, there's a added piece I think for UK especially because of the cultural aspect that yeah. we have uh, well we're we're in the, myself and yourself are kind of like the first generation born and bred in UK and you know our parents especially from the African at least from the African perspective yeah have you know um, just settled here arrived here do you know what I mean. Um, uh, and and that in itself creates also a strong bond and tie to cultural roots, um, and that also informs uh, a decision. Um, the 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 and and you're rightly so saying about how you know as the generations begin to settle in, let's say UK Europe, longer, you know those ties can begin to loosen, um, and those forced kind of narratives can begin to kind of seep away and then you start to see a mix and a blend because you, you you can't date someone that's culturally you guys are starting to align you know you, you don't it, i mean you can if you, you really if you really wanted to you could but if something's going to work you're going to have to culturally align you know like if, if i meet someone that is nigerian and they're strong in their culture mm-hmm. and i have a strong Ghanaian culture 
uh, well, we're going to have clashes because Fact. we're going to want our culture to be the dominant, predominant culture. So mm -hmm. oftentimes what happens is one has to lose out a little bit. Someone has to submit their culture slightly. I mean, there can always be a, a compromise, but there's there will one that there'll be one that might will predominantly come through. And sometimes you see that even at weddings, right? You see at weddings mm -hmm. and you see how the culture, you have two people from the, from different cultures. One's like, I, I was at a wedding every time with Ghanaian and Nigerian and the guy was Nigerian, but he was wearing the Ghanaian attire. Right. Right. And I was like, okay, I wonder what kind of causes they had to have that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and it, just some of the, some of the traditions that were being, were followed were Ghanaian. So there are the, you, you've, you've got to be able to mesh on that cultural aspect. And, and even that, like you said, you, you made a beautiful point. Even within our cultural aspect, let's say, for instance, uh, our our lineages of like country wise, even within that, there is tribalism. Oh yeah, and and that can inform things well. Yeah, jump back in. And and not just even not just that, we've also got then the colonial history mm. for Britain because that is what is allowing now uh, a kind of overarching Black British experience. Yeah, where. Now, um, now more than ever you can relate to someone who has who's from Jamaica for example or someone from St Lucia and mm. those people can find harmony in their experience and think I'm going to get married before mm. you didn't even have that access and you didn't have the um the ability to relate to them but the British kind of melting pot just throws all cultures in one where your Romanian mm. friends will eat jollof rice yeah you know I mean it, it, everybody is kind of a free-for-all yeah. over in the UK. I don't know, like, it's obviously different in America, but in the UK, it's a bit wild over here. Like, everybody kind of connects with everything. Everybody kind of gets to experience all different types of music and food and fashion um, to the point where everything kind of homogenizes slightly. And that can be good and it can be really bad because it's like the watered-down patois or creoles. Um, that, but then you've also got a new creole of Black British English. So mm. it, it's, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. And if you are somebody who likes the kind of purity of your heritage, you may not be yeah. for it. And you may continue to want to marry within your tribe or within your nationality. But if you are someone quite open to um, the new experiences, you might quite welcome what's happening. Um, but then you have to wonder how far is it going to go? Because after you get Black British, you then get mm. Blasian. And then you get, you know, it continues to erode and then you get white people accessing the culture. And then, yes, it, 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 it's a bit of a slippery slope. Um, but definitely the UK is going to look interesting over the next few generations. Yeah. Uh, and and, you know, that's I mean, this 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 talk, even like talking about dating and then slightly skewing off it a little bit, this even permeates conversation around church. Right. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about what church do you attend? Because uh, should a church be multicultural? If it's multicultural, is that then removing the the cultural aspect for us as black people? It, like this doesn't just stop at relationship dating. You know, the 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 blurred lines of I should say blurred line or the complicated lines uh, that are drawn. Um, you know, between uh, especially in the UK and the thing because we're not just labeled black in UK. Well, to white people, we are. But amongst ourselves, we label ourselves as you're African, you're Caribbean, and then we can break it down Ooh, again and say, oh, you're thing. Jamaican, uh, you're, you're, you're Ghanaian. And then even then, we break it down again and say, are you yep. from backyard, right? Or are you from, are you from back home? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we break it down slightly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So sometimes we even yeah, have those yeah. jokes, like, I'm not married to someone from back home. Like, yep. oh, you want to marry Ghanaian or my drinking? It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> no, but it's real because it's about... Um, kind of the belief systems you have, the way you've been brought up, your mindset is completely different being brought up back home and being brought up here. And I know people may disagree, but for, 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 for instance, I, I always say, like, I learned to be British, mm. but I was taught to be Nigerian. Yes. Right? There's a difference. My access and affinity to my Nigerian culture is through my parents, is through my community, but I learned to be a Brit. Yeah, this is my lived experience. So it is very hard. It's just, yeah, it's 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 complex over here, guys. Let me just say that. <laughs> it, it, it's complex because we even have, like, for instance, um, the the 
uh, I want to say African, but it's more, uh, yeah, it's African, but it's less, but it's uh, sometimes some people, are, some people are more specific, like for instance, Jamaican and, and Africa, right. Or Caribbean and African, right. You have within sometimes within our African communities. And I'm sure it might be said on your side as well. Don't marry Jamaican. Don't yeah. marry, marry Caribbean. <laughs> Never marry Caribbean. We don't marry Caribbeans around here. We marry, uh, you know what I mean? Like yeah, they rather yeah. you, they rather you marry white than marry Jamaican. Like Jamaican. That and 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 that those are those lines that are drawn with, yeah. uh, you know, culturally with our with our heritage and and our parents from who have settled here and stuff like that. So there even that, you know, I, 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 one of my girlfriends that I went to see the dad and yeah, I said, are you, are, you, are, you, are you Nigerian? I said no. He said no because the Nigerians I've met, they're they're lazy. I'm like, wait, Nigerians are lazy. I'm, I'm, it's huh? rare that you meet Nigerians that are lazy. It's rare. Hey. <laughs> so I said, I don't know what kind of streak your daughters have, but fam, <laughs> she's collecting the wrong ones, okay? <laughs> because the ones that I know, they hustle whether it's legal or illegal. Um, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. But uh, you know, so th there are those lines that that seem to happen even within that. And I say, I, so I, I think that's why, although we have a lot of the, although we have, like you said, black people. Uh, UK wise, let me say UK wise, our black community, African and Caribbean, seemingly do date outside. Um, it, it the the I, I think with us in America, the difference, like I said, we we've got such complicated layers. Yeah, we've been thinned out yet because generations have had that. You see it, but it's not as uh, I don't want to say it's not as because you do see it, but. It, I'm trying not to be generalized here. So, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> but you see uncles who are doing it. I'm just going to be real with you. I mean, you do see some black brothers doing it. Don't get twisted. But I'm saying you see a lot of uncles. A lot of doing uncles. What? I'm just going to say it. Uncles doing what? Marion. Oh, uh, okay. Outside. Um... Meanwhile, they have <sighs> wife at home. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> 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 you know uh so yeah yeah but um yeah so uh let, let let me let me get some of people into the convo then um let me get some of people into the convo uh bronze birds here uh let me introduce you bronze what are you saying i'm gonna introduce people one by one so we can get the conversation nicely flowing bronze what, what are you saying what's what's your thoughts here i know we was just kind of talking in general but what's your kind of thoughts bro hey first of all kojo it's been a while what's good man no but it's been a yeah, bit of a while good, man. <laughs> what's good, man? What's good, man? What's good, man? Right. What's going on, Max? Um, hey, so I, I was gonna say this. I was saying in the chat, I, I recognize that lady, uh, Annalicia. Um, that, that I'm sorry to say, man, she's bad vibes. She makes her whole entire career off of uh, thrashing on a so-called black men. I was on a panel with her before. Um, she she yelled at me, <laughs> and I was just trying to have a conversation. So yeah, I mean, you you I mean, look, it's your show. But I just wanted to put the warning out there. She's like that. Uh, she also has a podcast where she definitely <laughs> sits up there and gets at uh, so-called black men every chance she gets. Uh, so that's the main thing. But getting to the conversation, um, I did. I told. I put a stats in the chat. Also, I said it's eighty percent over eighty percent of so-called black men still marry with inside their race. Um, mm. So I get that you'll see interracial dating. And I mean, in America, America, I guess it's more taboo when it comes to interracial relationships, even though mm. so-called black women are saying that they don't care anymore. Well, there's a notion in it, you know what I mean? And I and I guess because it still relates to, I guess, the the, the slavery days, UK or the Europe, Europe getting out of slavery first before America, right? Because that was like the, what was it, 1830s, 1840s, something like that. And then the 1865, allegedly, is when we got out of slavery. So my thing about it is, is that I guess the problem we're having here, there's hurt parties on both sides. And mm. they use uh, white people as like a shield almost to kind of be like, mm. well, I'm happier here. No thanks to you because you put me in such and such pain. You know what I mean? And the thing about it is, I, I, I've always stressed this, just be happy. I, I've always said my first preference has always been so-called black women. Always. You're, you're talking to an American. But I've never, I've seen the the division within side of that as well. Because then it's like uh, Caribbeans, like certain Caribbean parents may tell they, 
date kids. Don't date African Americans. Mm. Right? Don't date African Americans. Africans is is also there are certain Africans that be like, do not date them. And then of course that whole entire uh mark of being called a Nakata comes in. So I've seen I've been able to see and have those conversations where it's like, well, you know, y'all lazy, y'all don't do this or this, that, and the third, and I just be sitting back listening because any culture you go to, a westernized world or whatever country, you're going to see there be conflict amongst people of any nationality. It's always going to happen. So it's just kind of like, okay, I mean, I get it. But at this point, it's just like, who are you going to be happy with? As long as you're not, my, my, my idea is simple, because there's communities on YouTube that gear themselves on threat, especially so-called black men and women. There's communities on YouTube that make their whole entire ploy of saying, oh, you you men ain't nothing. You women ain't nothing. Uh, and not the name name call, but there's there's a community like Divestors. They have a whole entire community where they say, you know, so-called black men, y'all bullet bags. Y'all this, y'all that. Um, let's date the white man. I'd rather be happy with the white man instead of you. So, I mean, I've seen it and I'm just like, I mean, look. There's no reason for thrashing. There's no reason for talking down on your own men or women. Just date who you want, but don't come back to the pro-black conversations of people who really care about staying with inside their race and then just trying to create a whole entire scene and argue and project your negativity on someone else. It's not worth it. I hear that, bro. I hear that, bro. Uh, that's real. That's real. Uh, stay on. Stay on. I'm gonna get uh, someone yeah. uh, to, on the line. Uh, Kay, uh, welcome to the conversation. What's your, what's your thoughts uh, in regards to this topic? I know we're talking a little bit about uh, do black men date black okay. women, like etc. Cetera, et cetera. What's what's your kind of um, position and what's your kind of thoughts? Uh, first, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, and I will say from my perspective for people in the chat and so that you get to know my background, you see JD, PhD, so obviously educated black woman. Um, I also date a black man. And so I think that there are three main points to this. One is that when we talk about the black community, the first thing that we have to talk about is what is our community, right? So what are we thinking about? Because even though we're all in the black community, we're not experiencing it the same way, right? And I give this talk at work too. So I work for a very large company. And when we think about the company, what we think is our office, our floor, the city that we're in. And that's the same thing that we're thinking about when we're thinking about the black community. Right, so in my black community, I deal with a lot of black scientists because I have a PhD in chemistry and also I have a law degree, right? And so most of my friends are doctors and lawyers. And mm -hmm. when I look at my black community, my black lawyer, black doctor friends are in relationships with other black people. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times when we get into this conversation and we talk about well, women get educated and they date outside of the race, I'm like, wait, wait, that's not happening in my community. In my community, I, and I was talking about this with one of my friends too, who again is a doctor. And he said he knows one interracial couple at that level. The rest of us are all dating other black people. Mm. The second is, and I think that this, I'm a little bit older, so it might be a generational thing, cool. is that there's a difference between what is said on the internet mm. than what is happening in real life, right? Aye. Because in real life, when people are in relationships, we're just living our lives. Mm. Not, I don't have time to be on the internet to say, well, men should do this and women should do that. I'm just living my life. I pop in. Sometimes the energy is off and I can't deal with it, so I pop out. But a lot of times people want to argue and they want to be in conflict. So, and you can find that on the internet. And that's where they live. And so I think a lot of times with this conversation, it becomes this non-issue like black on black crime. Mm. We talk about black people not dating other black people. And then we don't really compare that to anything, right? So it's like, well, black people are killing black people. How are we going to solve that problem? when really, okay, well, white people kill white people. 
And now we're sitting here arguing amongst each other. And I just looked this up while I was in the waiting room. According to Pew Research, Asian women date and marry outside of their race more than anybody else. But we're not having a conversation about that. Wait, wait, pause, pause. I yes. need you to say that again. According to Pew Research, so I will give you my, my uh, citation, Asian women date and marry outside of their race more than anyone else. We don't talk about that. We're talking about the black man versus the black woman, right? That's what we're talking about. And with regard to the question that David brought up yesterday about what's a solution, there really is a solution in visibility, right? Mm. And um, so I know this because I follow David and I followed David before I knew that you two were connected. He does graphic design. My brother is also a graphic designer and he does black art. You don't see a lot of black comics, right? My brother also does black comics. It's not visible. Mm -hmm. And when we speak about visibility, there are studies that prove that visibility is a means of getting some increase in activity within communities. So in 2008, there was a study and it was called the Obama effect, right? So when Barack Obama was doing very well on the campaign and he was shown positively on the news, black children across the board were actually doing a lot better in the US education system because he was visible. They mm -hmm. saw when we're talking about women, they call it the CSI study, right? So in CSI, they have female uh, doctors working in forensics. There's an increase in the number of women that get into forensics, right? Back in the 70s, there used to be a lot of television shows that had black couples, right? Mm -hmm. The 80s, there was the Cosby show, Family Matters, um, A Different World. We had... What's the uh, Fresh Prince? You know, we have mm. visibility. We don't have that anymore. But visibility is shown, studies have shown that it works. Even you, Kojo, and I'm going to request this now. Uh, when you did maths last season, not this current season, you had different panels. You had a panel where it was married couples, panel, and then you had the married couples. Yeah. That's visible married black couples. When we watch mm. television shows like Married to Medicine, those are black couples. It's a visibility issue Come and on. it has been studied and shown to prove right. And that's one of the solutions. You can't come again, Kay. You can't come again. Yeah, you can't come again. Yeah, come in correct. So we'll love to hear it, we'll love to hear it. Good points though, good points. Visibility. Absolutely key, key point. Um, love that as well. Let me get Mo involved in the conversation. Mo, how you doing? Hey, uh, hi everyone that's in the panel. Hey, Mo. Uh, <laughs> so this chat is a madness, um, mainly because of the video that I've seen is actually, it's a lot. And I feel like sometimes it's a little dangerous to say someone's making good points because, uh, that's that's not all the time what matters. The, serp the serpent made good points too. But like, what's the point of a good point if it's not coming from a good place? And I'm glad that um, I've never seen that girl a day in my life, but my spirit of discernment is wild. And I can see an agent of div divisiveness and destruction when I see one. That person had no intention of coming in and having an actual conversation. That wasn't their goal especially to call people useless. That's like one thing that I'd never call a human being in their life. Um, you can't go around calling people useless. You can't go around uh, calling people names. That's just not okay. But something that was said just recently, I'm actually interested. I'm not trying to combat with your stats. I'm just interested because when I hear a stat, I'd like to go a little bit deeper. Um, like for example, when you said the Asian women divest the most, is that the right term, Di or date out of their race the most, the Han Chinese race is literally over 19% of the whole world's population. So there's a large number of them. Are, is that stat for the United States? Is that stat for the UK? Is that stat globally? And then what would the percentage of ratio be? 
compared to the black community. Um, Cause of, of course Asians are gonna have a higher stat number because there's literally most of the world's, they're the highest world's population. So that's just my, um, I was just wondering in what context that stat stood. Um, but in regards to the back and forth between black men and black women, to me, it's honestly, it's really, it's very disappointing to see me personally, like Max, I'm a Yoruba babe as well. What's up? So it's like, I'm, I've been privileged to really be around my community a lot. So I'm around a lot of black men that like black women, whether you're ambiguous or non-ambiguous, like for a Nigerian man to see a Nigerian woman and she's brown, he's not like, oh, in fact, he's chasing you down the street. So a lot of these issues do stem from places where it's westernization a lot, like heavily. It's everywhere in the world, yes, but it's heavily there. And I feel like there's so much vitriol that shouldn't be had. And I'm really tired of having conversations where there's no solutions. Like you, sh the minute you turn your mic on, before you turn it off, you have to say a solution. If you're not saying a solution, culture, you need to be cutting people off like, uh, my friend, enemy of the enemy of destruction, because it's not, this stuff is getting ridiculous. Cause you go on YouTube, you go on Clubhouse, you go everywhere. And it's just like, they keep talking about, oh, these athletes, these athletes. We also have to keep into context. We're talking about, oh, this actor went to, was dating a black woman, he was nothing. And then when he got to this, be a celebrity, he dated a white woman. Yes, he probably also dated a white man. He probably also slept with the director to get the role. He probably also did rituals in the back. Like, let's stop acting like these people that we're looking at that are doing all these things on TV that we're talking about are even coming from a good place. You don't want these people. We just saw, what is his name, Zach Stacy, molly whopping this lady. Women, black women, is this who you want? Is this who we're upset that is dating these women? I'm not upset. Zach Stacy, it's not gonna be me or bak 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 all over the place. It's not going to be me. So yeah, in real life, black men do like black women in real life. In high school, we might have had someone call us a, a black, dark, da we're, we're talking about children. We're talking about children. And yes, we carry those traumas on with us as black women. When we get older, we carry these traumas on with us as black men as we get older. But um, the, the statistics do stand. That is one statistic that does stand. A majority of black men are dating black women, period. Because we would know if it's the opposite. A majority of them on ground, not in Hollywood, not on the hills, not on the TV, not in the rap videos, in real life, are dating black women. And even when you see someone or black men or black women that are dating outside of their race, there's one or two, there's one of two things that could be happening. Either he actually loves this woman, congratulations for him or her, or he's a self-hating colorist, congratulations for me for not getting him. Those are the only two solutions and options when you see an interracial couple. It's either true love, and we all love to see it, or it's a bunch of self-hating people. Count your blessings, name them one by one, okay? So that's really just like my opinion, so yeah. <laughs> solid points, solid points. Different perspectives, I love that. Thank you, Mo. And, and good question, yeah, we do have to um check uh in terms of the stats whether it, it means for a particular country or geographical location good point oh my gosh i don't know why i got a bit of gas in there from, but good good points there mo yeah i'm definitely hearing you i'm definitely here on that thank you you're welcome can i add another thing also i'm sorry yeah go for it that's okay so like i just looked at some of the chats and they're like why is the marriage rate so low i'm talking about i just said in my culture nigerian marriage rates are not low they're not. Mm. It's the African American marriage rates that are low. So that's not a question that I can answer because that's not I me. Mean, I was born on the land. I was born in Nigeria. So that I'm talking, you're talking about why are the marriage rates so low? You're talking about delusion, black femicide. Af N Nigerian women aren't going anywhere. Our men are marrying us. I agree. They're dating us and they're marrying us. Uh, we are not going anywhere. 
So there's a bigger thing at play. There's no delusion with me. There's no nothing with me. It's a matter of my men are marrying us. So it's just, these are statistics and we need to think of actual solutions, not bashing each other. I'm not saying, oh, black men are bad, black women are bad. We need to actually think of solutions because we've been arguing for how long? We've been arguing for how long? Clearly that's not working. Something else needs to be done. I don't know what it is. I don't have the solution right now, but that's what happens when you have like-minded people who are trying to be respectful to each other and not yelling and calling each other names like the video you played before, mm -hmm. where maybe we can come up with a solution together yeah. to increase that marriage rate. Because why would I want to see a low marriage rate? Oh uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Strong boss, strong boss. Strong bass. Gordon Desir, what's your thoughts? Hey bro, how you been? I'm good, bro. What's good, man? No, not much, man. Um, all is well. Uh first I want to say um shout out to Max um and um Mo and KB um makes a good point to clue on Bronzeburg. Um what stuck in my head is what Mo says, what's the point of a good point if it's not coming from a good place? I really do love that, and that really um, shed a light on that. And I also put, and I, and it kind of get me thinking that the devil comes from a bad place, but God comes from a good place. And shout out to Mo for 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 putting out that. That's real wisdom right there. <laughs> um, for Bronze Bird, um, I like to say that um, um, Mona Lisa, um. Yeah, she is bad news. Um, although she had the good point, but she was, but she's in a bad place, unfortunately. I understand where she's coming from, and I understand how she feels. But for her out of her mouth to say that I hate black men, you know, that's more that's kind of shows you that you're hating the person that hurt that hurt you, you know. Well, when she say I hate black men. Oh man, man! One of her, one of her, one of her, vid one of her videos, man. When oh. I, I used to listen to, man, on her content, and I don't know if she was being sarcastic, but for her to say that, I'm like, uh, okay, you know. So, but you know, she coming. From, it's sound like she coming from a place of hurt, but but the moment that I see you kicked her out, you know, and it's like, okay, I understand why you kicked her out because mm -hmm. you're asking for solutions for solutions, and for her to say that she don't care. And one thing I learned that when people say they don't care, they won't learn anything. And that's the problem. But we have to learn something in order us for the care. But if we say we don't care, how are we going to learn? How are we going to grow? You know what I mean? So for seeing that, you know, like I saw her content like months ago, but for a moment, the way how she was spewing with hatred and calling people names, I'm like, okay, I can't um, listen to that. That's it's It's filled with bad influence and everything just like what bronze bird saying and what mo is saying and that's the sad part you know but for her that that came out of her mind i don't know if she's being sarcastic or what i don't know if for her to say she hates black men but she might be sarcastic or i don't know that i'm just leaving there or let's just say allegedly in that part but the thing is that um she, she 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 do need help man she do needs healing that's the point of that you know she just needs to be to heal and forgive and move on so she can have peace, you know, and that's the whole point of it. Um, I know a lot of people are trying to find solutions to it, but all I can say, the real solution is, 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 is basically dealing with yourself and find out what was the problem with yourself, what made you behave the way it is, or why that she, that your wife is failing, why you're failing. Just don't point out one person, but also look at both sides, yourself and your spouse. You know, so we could find out, OK, we're not getting anywhere. What is our problem here? What is it? Tell me what's my problem. I can tell you what's yours. And then we can then we find that solution right there, you know, and and and, and that's the point. And then that's the solution to that, you know, and and the real solution is, is that um, um, we lack foundation. Um, don't know if you agree with me, but we do lack foundation when it comes to finding someone. And I think that foundation is to just uh, start us being friends before I get into a relationship. And you decide if this is where you want to go or not. So I think there's a foundation to it. Just start as friends and before I get into a relationship and then get married, you know, and therefore that solid foundation can build right, 
you know, and then the future from there. Just like how me and my spouse did. We started a foundation and we're married for a year and happily married, you know. And but but that's the problem. I think they lack foundation here, you know, to start as friends. So therefore you can learn to to see if love if love builds from there and 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 if love build, then you two can build together right here. And and trust. I think that's where the foundation has to I have to be learned and start from because people just jump in a relationship real quick and they get married real quick and look what happened. And it's like, how can you build and how can you grow? You know? So I think to find a real um, relationship, you just got to deal with yourself first. So therefore you can get rid of all the burdens out of your back before going forward. So therefore you become a better person than you ever was, you know, by the grace of God, you know? And that's the thing about that. So, like I said, um, I think you did the right thing by booting her out because um, I think I think that she was very rude and she doesn't have no solution, you know, and it's like we and, and you show yourself what kind of man you are. You know, it's like, look, um, I can't deal with this foolishness. So if you're trying to get me out of my square or me getting my emotion, that's not happening. I'm here to have a real conversation to come together with some solution so we all can grow and build that foundation there. And not just like us older guys, but for the kids as well too. So therefore they don't have to face rejection, all that. So they don't have to, well, they're gonna face rejection, but learning how to deal with it, you know? that That's the thing about that. So therefore they don't be lost in their way. And I think, and that's the point of teaching kids how to face rejection. And once they're being taught, they'll remember and they'll grow from it. And like I said, um, social media is good and bad, but the bad part is people just come and spew negative things on YouTube because, you know, what happens to them? They come from a bad place. And when they use the creative content, it's to show you that people who can relate to who they minister to, and they're to the point that they don't feel like they're alone, you know? But in social media, they don't feel alone. But in the real world, they feel alone. And when they feel alone, they feel miserable because they're tired and see people having a good life. And that's why I believe that when they do this kind of stuff, at least they don't be alone. So it's like the social media is the new reality of it. So I think it's very sad. But um, Mo, you made a great point of that quote, and it's very good. Um, Max, you create, you, you made a good lot of info. Bronze Bird, um, I feel you, bro. We both had to jump off that stuff, man. So yeah, that's all I got to say. Appreciate sure that, Gordon. Thank you very much. Love for that. Oh man, yeah, no. Um, everyone's made some really good points. Um, you know, coming from different perspectives, different angles, and you know, I I, I appreciate that. You know, and we've got a little bit of light uh, on this conversation as well. And um, <coughs> oh, basically, maybe. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's it's you know, this conversation is you know, you guys are are are, are speaking. Um, eloquently and quite well and um you know this is this is what we want to be able to bring to our community because we need to sit down and be able to discuss how best to move us forward right because i i do agree that as men as men as leaders of our uh of our black community we are at the forefront we should be at the forefront and we should be involved in the conversation of getting things going forward um, I also believe that our, our, our black women too have wisdom to also add, you know, um, understanding a different perspective, right? To to help us uh, come up with solutions best forward um, and to help us execute some of those decisions. Um, that's not to remove accountability from men to make uh, decisions and to come up with, um, you know, plans of how to uh, move forward but it's rather a case of understanding that we actually need each other you know uh, and we need to we need to use two heads not one right our community needs both aspects it needs both women and men men god put both women and men into a community so they can help one another right adam was tending to the garden but eve was created as a helpmate which means that she has something to offer you know what i mean she has something that she can add to the conversation. So it's not excluding women from uh, the solution aspect, uh, but we, we 
definitely agree that we do want men at the forefront of those conversations to help drive going forward um, and, and making sure that we're also, uh, you know, uh, being there to, and again, this probably will lead to another conversation in terms of uh, protecting our community and our, and our black women. Um, so yeah, no, no, I, I'm, I'm hearing what uh, people are saying. I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything else. If they've got something else on their heart, on their mind, you know, maybe they have another aspect of conversation they want to tap into. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to to add something. I just wanted to add one thing because I said Go this for it, in yeah. the private chat, but not to the group in general. The stat that I gave was for the U.S. Okay. Okay. So, so no, you, you can expand on that, Kay, if you want. If you want. Oh, to. yeah. So, for those that that missed it, what I was saying is that you know we keep talking mm -hmm. about black men dating outside of their race. And to me, it's almost like a non-topic, like black on black crime. Like it's something that the internet or the media would want us to focus on. But if you compare it to another stat, like Asian women in the US that date outside of their race at a rate higher than black men dating outside of their race, it's not like a real stat, but we don't talk about the Asian women not dating and marrying Asian men. And as far as the numbers are concerned, it's a percentage. And so it's not necessarily the actual numbers, which is again, the argument of the black on black crime, right? Is that, well, black people are um, killing each other at a higher rate, which we're not. It's just what's being shown on the news, mm. right? But the percentages of people that kill inside of the race are generally the same. I'm not going to state mm. any factual numbers, but it's essentially people kill within the race more than they kill outside of the race. And the idea is that you kill or marry, and that's you know, facts, the people that are around you. So if you're around black people, that's who you're going to marry and kill. If you're around white people, that's who you're going to marry and kill. And so you know, we focus on black people, right? So we focus on black on black crime and black people not marrying, but it's just something that's being shown on the internet. It's being shown on uh, television as opposed to the opposite, which is what's happening in reality. Mm. Well, I love that. And I think that is, and I'll let Max go after, um, you know, I think that it, we actually kind of mentioned that in the early comments before we asked the ladies to come on. We actually mentioned that earlier on, and we and we spoke a little bit about that in the sense of it, it, is it anecdotal versus is it the stat? Because anecdotally, we can understand that when if we're talking about from uh, perspectives, if black women are seeing that more black men are dating outside the race, because it's anecdotally, it's what your perception is, what you're around. Um, but what are the if this if we didn't couple that with a stat as you just done there, um, is that the absolute truth? And then I love the fact that you brought the fact that obviously in that stat, yes, Asian women tend to date out more because we don't bring that into the conversation. Because what's happened is this conversation isn't is coming from a hurt place. So this conversation we're having is hurt from both communities, both men and men and women, black. Uh, uh, we're having this conversation from a hurt place, and we we don't see objectively sometimes, right? Because that stat is what is there. I've actually seen that stat myself. That's why. But I, um, I never quoted it because I, I don't know where it was coming from. So just in case. But, you know, we, we, and I think I made a point and I think someone else made it. I think it might have been Mo or Kay who mentioned it about visibility that it will look like there are more doing that because of what they see on our screens, right? They pump us with, um, you know, uh, they pump us uh, with some points, like for instance, uh, you know, you're, you're watching, uh, oh, okay, maybe I'm going to hype the comment, mm, maybe not. Mm. <laughs> okay, so I so I have an issue with uh, visibility, right? Because what I see on my screen, even from a UK perspective, is even when they do a film that has a black lead, too many times I see that they couple that person with either Ooh, it's going to be intense. A light-skinned woman or a mixed woman or a white woman. And I'm not saying it's not, we don't have, we don't have black leads with black women. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is as soon as we do have black male, black women, that film becomes black. That doesn't become national. It becomes black. 
that's part of the black uh, sense of films, right? But as soon as you have a black man or a black woman with a mixed man or a white man, that film now becomes national, right? And it is, the, and I think I watched a, 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 a TV, it was a film on Netflix. It was about some people in, the, I think they were in the Bronx and it was a young girl, mixed race and the friend was black, right? And the scene was basically the, the light skinned girl got all the guys, and the black girl was the one that didn't get none of the guys. And it turned out she was being a bit of a hater. And I was just like, yeah, they done done it again. They done they done done it again. They're out here selling us this storyline that we're gonna take back to our community and war with one another, right? But it, again, it's it's that visibility piece. If we don't see it, it's hard for us to believe that that's what's happening around us. So having someone on a high plane is important. And this is why part of our solution base is about, this is why I love um, uh, Jordan Peele, right? Now, whether I agree with Hollywood or not, uh, they are also part of the war, well, you know, and whether someone calls it a holy war or not, eh, that's another story. But, um, you know, to see, for instance, when you see, uh, when I watch Us, now I don't like horror films. I absolutely dis I despise horror films, yeah? But when I, I, ha I had to go and watch Us because I saw black people up in there. Okay, and I said, I, I see them everywhere. I said, I've got to go and watch Us. Just for the fact that we have, uh, you know, our black leads in this. I want to go and watch it, right? So, because it helps to further that image that, you know, this is uh, this is something that's normal within our community. But when we don't have that visibility, it can look like it's not really happening. But let me let Max jump in. Max, let me, Max, will you want to jump in? If anyone else can jump in after, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll make the conversation to you. Yeah, no, there's there's a few interesting things in that. Um, but I, I, what I was going to say prior to your point was in terms of like where the conversation, like an aspect to still cover, is recognising the influence of trauma Speak in our community. Because I think you made the point that black men and black women, no, I think and Alicia made the point that black men and black women have both been through traumatic experiences. And I think you later on said that we respond to trauma differently. And um, I think that might be part of the solution conversation of really recognizing the trauma um, because there is so much of it. And it, it, is, it is so it's really convoluting the conversation because when everybody's hurt, and it can be really hard to, to reach any sort of um, resolve. And so when she, when Alicia was there, there was a lot of power and a lot of pain in what she was saying. Um, but because she was speaking to pained people, it's hard for her to be the first one to get healing. It's hard for her to be the first one to put at the front of the line to see the doctor when we're all bleeding, <laughs> we're all broken. So I think that can be part of the issue um, and why we sometimes struggle to move the conversation forward because we're all in pain. We've all got trauma. We've all had bad experiences. And yes, this is a generalization, but just speaking in terms of some of the issues we're facing, that's how the barrier to the solutions that we're looking for. This is part of the conversation. Love that point, Max. You're absolutely right. Dealing with um dealing with uh, different dealing with different traumas, a uh, way the way that we the way that we process trauma, different. Um, you're absolutely right, you know. Um, and maybe that's that's another conversation that needs to be had. How do we uh, begin repairing and healing uh, both sets of party within our community? What do, what do both sets of parties actually need? And maybe that's the conversation that needs to happen next um, for for women and for men. You know, black women and black men. Black men. What are our pain points, and what are the places of healing we need to have? You know what I mean? Um, what are what are those places that we need to heal? I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> It's going to come back to black men um, for both parties, uh, I think, because, and then this is not me trying to, no, this is me trying. Yeah, no, this is me trying. Um, black men and, and our households, and I know we have trauma, and that's why some people are doing what they're doing, but a lot of this stems from our, our, our broken households. And that doesn't mean that black men are not home or black women are not home. This is about the fact that people are also not emotionally present, we have parents that are narcissistic. We have parents that don't care about their children. We have parents who are ill-equipped. We have young parents who are still trying to make it, make it understanding of life. And, and, you know, so there are whole different aspects within that. But it starts with a home in a community. Uh, but Gordon, go for it. 
Um, yeah, from my experience, uh, when you um, we said, what's the solution for black men? Um, what is an order? We, what's an order we need to do? I would say, um, start dealing with ourselves first. We have to repent, um, re repent, um, basically change our mind, and um, and really that be Jesus Christ can change can can really change us, you know, because um, Christ says that um, come as you are, and I will make you make you clean. And that means is that if you come as you are and me and I make you clean, I will reveal everything to find what's the root cause of it of why you become this way, you know, generational curse, everything and right now. And and I think we should like own up to our responsibility. I think we need to show compassion uh, to um, to our spouse, black women, show compassion. We need to show empathy to them because um, they're very emotional and we need to value them, show them, show them validation, to value them a lot. And that's, and that's when you have compassion and empathy to them. So I think that's where, where, where it starts from there. And that's the healing part right there. Um, based on from my experience from there, because it's like, it's like, God will show you a lot of stuff, man, for years to find out what's wrong. Like, oh, wow. Now I understand. Now I understand this. Now I understand where it started, where the root cause of it, where it started. So it's it's it start from it starts from there. It starts from yourself, you know. And that moment when you change, you know, this is where it's like you have a a new identity that you have that God has given you. So that's why I would say that's where it starts from. I love that, Gordon. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely right. It starts from us repenting. I like that. I like that. You know what I'm saying? I hear that, bro. I hear that. Mo, what's your thoughts? And I'm going to get Bronze Bird in as well. What's your thoughts, Mo? Uh, yeah. One of my thoughts is like, oppression is real. Mm. Not a myth. Oppression is a fact. Black people are, are, going, are going through a lot, have been through a lot. And I feel like, yeah, Asian women date outside of their race, but I'm not Asian. I'm Black. So we're talking about our community, even though that's still a good point. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm disputing anything that was said. That's still a good point. But like Kojo said, it starts at home and black people are our home, whether they're in the UK, whether they're in uh, Australia, America, it doesn't matter where, any place that a black person roams, that's our home. And there's a lot of things that are against us, incarceration, you might not even, you go to work and you might not even make it home that day. Violence in our community and outside of our community. That it's just like, it makes sense why there's a lot of discord and like vitriol between, because you can only be peaceful when you're given a peaceful environment. It's hard to not be peaceful in a peaceful environment and we're not being provided with peaceful environments. And that's why I'm glad that the men on this stage are actually like taking accountability because you are the leaders of the community. It is what it is, I'll say it. And it falls on your head. Whatever happens, good or bad, it falls on your head. It's not me being, a, it's not me playing the blame game. It's not me pointing fingers. It's not me, it's just me telling the truth. It falls on your head. God is gonna look at you first. Like, so what were you doing in your household? Oh, you weren't there? Okay. Oh, what, what were you doing with your household? Oh, you were beating her up? Okay. What were you doing in your household? You were poisoning them with terrible m music? Okay. It's kind of just like when Kay made the statement of how like social media has become the new reality, what really helped, it's easy to get wrapped up into the red pill and the tunnel pill or whatever pills is going on now. It's easy. All you have to do is one, one, one watch, watch one video. And then YouTube is like, you might also like this. And you watch it and you watch it. And then three hours later, you sit in there mad at the whole world. Angry in your own living room. Pissed. So it's kind of just like unplugging is definitely helpful. That's a solution. Unplugging. I had to unsubscribe to a lot of things. Maybe even, and I'm not here to like police people's music, police what people listen to. Maybe don't listen to every song where it's, I like a red bone, I like a light skin. Maybe that's not the song we should be listening to. 
maybe that's not the music that you should only have on your Spotify. There's a lot of people where you look on their Spotify, Lil Xan, little, 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 baby, 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 this. Let's listen to Grown Ups. Everyone can't be baby in your playlist. That's very helpful because all of these things are little things that we can control. We can't control uh, white supremacy. We can't control that. We can't control whether a leading role is a white man or a white woman or a black woman or this or that. We can't control that. But we can control what we put on our Spotify. We create our own playlists. We control what channels we watch. We control what TV we watch. We control who we idolize. Are we idolizing rappers? Which is why we care so much about their opinions and who they date. Which is why we get mad when the baby is with someone that doesn't look like, I don't care what the baby thinks. I don't. Unplugging is definitely, and also, especially like for black women, black women go through the most. And I'm talking as a black woman, we go through it. Surround yourselves by women that love you, by women that care for you and the women, even if it's just one person you can find in the whole globe of 7 billion people on this planet, stick with that one person, call that one person, talk to that one person. You don't need a whole gang of, gang of friends. If you just need one person that you know has your back and loves you and treats you kindly and you can cry to and you can open up with, that is also very, very helpful. Even if you have to go to a therapist, a black lady therapist, I go to one. She's worked wonders. It's a lot of things that will really help and heal because this world, yes, there's a lot of people on it, but you are you. When you wake up, you're with yourself. You're not with the baby. When you go to sleep, you're with yourself. You're not with all these rappers and athletes. You're with yourself. And you can control, if nothing else, yourself. So start eating good if you can. Start listening to good music. Everyone that's on here, clearly you have a phone or a computer, so you have technology, monitor it. Cut things off that don't feed your spirit positively. If it's a Kevin Samuels video, say, not interested. So you don't see these man of fear things where they're telling you you're ugly, where they're telling you you're stupid, where they're telling you you're not worth anything. Cut it off. You don't have to listen to every rap song that comes out. It's not by force. So yeah, those are things that'll help you on an individual level. Maybe not a global level, but you will feel a lot happier. If you were 50% before, you're gonna be 60% after. You're gonna be a little bit better each day. So those were the solutions that I came up with for individuals. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mo. Yeah. Feed your spirit, guys. Feed your spirits the right way. Bronze Bird, what's your thoughts, man? Hey, so um, definitely agree with Mo and Gordon. Uh, I, I'm going to say this because uh, I'm going to jump down afterwards. Um, the, the thing about it is it goes back to where we are. It's, it's like you pick something and then you go off of that narrative and say that that narrative is true. Uh, my thing about it is, is that these conversations, because I've I seen the certain things in the conversations, um, something I've analyzed as well is that there's also intercultural beefs. And what I mean by that is, is that usually you could say that even it is the division of like, okay, well, you know, uh, so-called African-American women won't date the African-American men. They still want to be pro-black, pan-African or whatever you want to call it. So they'll date Caribbean instead and put them on a pedestal, or date Africans and put them on a pedestal. Um, and it goes back to what I was saying before. You don't need to do all that. Just be happy with who you're going to be happy with. And that's it. But this is the one thing I love when, you know, not even just women say this, a certain amount of our men say this, this nonsense and crap. When they say uh, stuff like we ain't never build anything, that, that is totally not true. If you're going to say an American society in which I'm looking right now, I can tell you directly the stuff you're using every single day that is built by a so-called black man. Should I? Now I should. Cellular phone was created by Henry Sampson. Okay. Let, let me go up the list. Elevator, Alexander Miles. That was a random one, but I want to give y'all just maybe at least two more so I can give y'all a perspective of where I'm coming from. 
home security system. Well, that's Marie Brown. It's a so-called black woman, of course, but there's a couple of more I have on this list and I'll share it in the back chat. But the, my point of making this is, do not ever say that so-called black men have not built anything. That's a lie. And to, to sit up there and put that as a perspective, like, nah, I'm not feeling that. But, but getting back to my point, all I'm saying is, if you really care for yours, care for yours. I definitely believe in the in the um, the way of God. Like you have to seek um, yourself and seek His word as well. You know what I'm saying? It has to be building upon yourself and then going out into the environment and making a discernment on what is good for you and what is bad for you. And the problem is, is that a lot of people be consumed with the masses. They're not being consumed with the individual self in order to move in a positive direction. So it's always going to be a problem when having these conversations because they're going to go with the status quo of what's out there instead of listening to themselves and knowing how to move better and efficiently. And then surrounding themselves with people who think uh, have the same mindset or think alike to them. So, you know, that's <laughs> that's my perspective on it. But um, yeah, thanks. Yeah, man. I uh, appreciate bronze, but thank you. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's an uh, interesting conversation. David, welcome to the conversation. Uh, you're in, so I might as well let you jump in straight away. Um, what's your contributing thoughts, bro? Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, shout out to all my Nigerians on the panel. You know, mm -hmm. you Nigerians always like to shout out each other. I love my people. Um, and uh, shout out to Bronze Bird, my brother. Um, always great to hear your perspective and um, greetings to everyone in the comment section. I love you guys. Always there in the comment section, chopping up with my people. Um, I think these are very great, great, great conversations to have. And um, <laughs> Grace Mercy say, say, don't do that. <laughs> these are conversations that I think it's needed for us to have. And, you know, when you talk about um, what are the solutions or how can we resolve some of these issues, for me, I think this is one of the answers to how we can do that because um, they said, if you want to change um, a nation, you should change um, the family because the family is the smallest unit of you know, the whole society. And obviously society makes a nation. So when you actually do have the conversations like this here, you have people who are gonna go and start families in a few years and they're having a different mindset, a different concept a different approach to things. And I think this is. Well, oh, David's got cut off just like that, you know. The connection was moving. One, one, one. Oh, uh, okay. How's it now? Okay, sweet. Yeah, you're back. You're back. Sorry. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the um, the slavery and some of the things that we've gone through as black people is one of the major reasons why we are where we are today. You know, if you look at how um, you talk about the the lynch letter and how um, the whole mental um, trauma traumatization and um, and um, slavery of black people really impacted us and our family setup and the way we actually um, look at families. You know, it 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 it, it all um, brings us to an understanding of how we got to where we are today. You know, um, I'm not one to go back to the speaker of yesterday to try and um, shed more light on whatever was being said, because for me, I just want us to look at a, f a perspective of what's the solution and how can we move literally, forward. Literally, 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 release your mic a little bit, release your mic, you are, you are, you are breathing into it. Yeah, just re just moving the mic away from your mouth a little bit, just so that you don't, you're catching a little bit. Go for it, bro. The solution and how we can move forward. And um, the solution for me is that we need each other. You know, black women need black men, black men need black women. And when I say that, I mean that in our homes, you know, um, as, as black fathers, as black fathers. Boy, David, your thing right now is mad kids. Are you on the rig? From not giving us. Oh. Are you there? <laughs> yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can, you can. Just be careful of your mic because I think it's catching up even your hand. So just, just hold it. Just oh, hold my okay. away and hold. Yeah. Sweet. So that... All right. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um. Yeah. So for me, I think we just need to keep on um 
lifting up each other, you know, um, supporting each other, showing our kids like this is how you treat a uh, uh, a black woman. This is how you treat a black uh, a black man, you know. Because on one end we can say you know black men need to do more in um, sort of um, lifting up the the black woman or the black mother, but then also you know the black women also need to support the black man by um, you know celebrating the black man and supporting us, you know, um, as we do all the hustle that we do on a daily basis. Um, so for me, I believe that it's that sort of yin and yang, because, you know, that's the whole concept of what God is talking about, where, you know, we need each other and um, we supporting each other and helping each other out, portraying a good positive light, you know, give a good example, because I'm a PK, you know, I grew up in church, you know, um, all my life. And one thing that a lot of people always say is that, pastors wives are always the most beautiful pastors always have beautiful wives you know and one thing i always see is that the pastors every time when they go on stage you know you hear them talk about their wives and they'll say oh you know i want to celebrate our first lady Yo, <laughs> yo, you don't be killing me. Hey, David, you there? We'll come back to you, David. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll come back roasted, to you, yeah they roasting David. <laughs> they roasting David. They are giving it the big ones. They said that David's got wind chimes in the background. David, we'll come back to you. Don't worry, David. We'll come back to you. See, wait, uh, let's get you involved with the convo. <laughs> hey, coach. <laughs> Wind chimes, David. <laughs> Man got the rustle in the background. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell I was gonna say. Now I'm distracted by his wind chimes. Oh my gosh! Hey. Oh man. Ah, oh. yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, Seaway, jump in for us, man. Yeah, this has been a great combo. Um, I I had to I had to jump in. Um. A lot of the things that, that were that were said, uh, most of them I agree with. But my moral, I guess, to the story is a lot of things can be true at the same time. You know, uh, what is her name? Uh, I'm just going to call her uh, the disruptor because I, I, I don't remember her name. Um, but, you know, a lot of her points that she made had a lot of truth to them, like you said earlier when you were speaking, when it's just you. Um, but it's also really true that, you know, representation matters and that we can't get bogged down in the things that we're seeing um, on the media or in our small communities, because if we kind of, if we can branch out, you know, it is really true that some of the things that they're portraying on TV are really not happening in, in, in real life on that scale. Um, and it also depends on where you're at. Cause when I was living in Madison, Wisconsin for law school, uh, the disruptor's opinion and her perspective was my perspective at that point. Cause I saw that all the time. I really felt like black men felt so isolated that they were trying to gravitate towards white women for this proximity to whiteness issue. And that wasn't just something I saw in the media. It was something I saw in real life all the time. You know, I go back home to Chicago and that's not going on. All of my friends who are all educated, we're all dating black men, black men are dating black women. And that is not, you know, my reality now. So, I think it's unfortunate that from her experience, she she's she got she's getting so caught up um, in this one kind of micro issue when honestly, you know, it may not be as bad as it seems. But I do think that, you know, representation matters. And the more that we see the black love that we like and that we want in our community, I think the better it will be. But on to solutions. I think some of the big solutions are we have to. We really have to work together to uplift each other and we can't be divisive um, in, in any way. And I think it's really easy. The, the white man in many ways have, have tried to divide us all the time, whether it's something that was said earlier that kind of bothered me, this whole, you know, black versus African thing. That is, that is really getting old and it has to stop. It's really, really divisive. And it doesn't help us move towards our common goal if we're all black people under this diaspora. Or if it's, you know, someone's black versus someone is mixed race or someone is biracial. So that, you know, 
all of this stuff doesn't help us work together as a collective unit. So I think it's really, really, really important that we work together because the more we work together, we can move towards, you know, our common goal. And yeah, you know, I hope that black men continue to date black women and vice versa. I do support black women who decide to date outside their race. Um, because our options are slim. You know, I'm thankful that I have a black man for a husband, but honestly, it, it's really, really hard out here uh, with the statistics and, you know, things that are going on. But, you know, I hope that we do uh, continue to support black love, but I, you know, I just hope we don't lose any sleep over if someone wants to date outside their race. Honestly, there's only so much you can do. So. Appreciate that, Seaway. Appreciate that, Seaway. Good points. Uh, 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 Mo, uh, you want to say something? Yes. So I've been scrolling because I noticed what Seaway was noticing. And I was like, where is all this? I scroll, scroll, scrolled. And I feel like I recognize where the divisiveness came from. And I'm bold enough to say, I think I'm the one that started that. Because when I said that, oh, Nigerian men marry Nigerian women. And then that's when it started do, 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 do. My intention wasn't to be braggadocious. My intention really wasn't to make it seem like, oh, we're better. That was not my intention. So if I'm the person that started the divisiveness of that, if that's where I saw it, because I had to scroll up, because I was like, because I'm not looking at the chat. So when I went back, I was like, what is all of this madness? I think that's where it started from, because that would, Max was talking about her experience in the UK. I'm talking about my experience in the US and then I'm also talking about my experience as a Nigerian. So there was no way by saying, oh, Africans are better than African-Americans, this, that, and third. Any black person of any black person in any diaspora is of importance to me. That's not, so if that's where it started from and anyone felt insulted by that, I can actually see how that could sound insulting. So yeah, no, that's not cool and that's actually not my intention and that's not what I meant to say and to put anybody down. Love for that, man. You see, this is what I love. Is this what we not love? Mm-hmm. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate that. You know, I I'm, I wasn't sure where it started, but I I, I just saw the uh, I saw Africa versus uh, America. So um, it looked like Avengers in the in the chat for a second. Um, but yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, um, yes, uh, David, uh, have you have you saw that the wind chimes? <laughs> hey! <laughs> yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Tell it, it sounds like you are crunching paper right underneath your 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 mic. <laughs> I sorted it out. Are we good now? Uh, let's try. Let's try. See what's going on. You try a little bit. You better... hold it still. Okay. Okay. Uh... I always, I always enjoy my Nigerian people. They already they already throwing shots at me, telling me it's up Nepa. You know, <laughs> that's a that's a Nigerian Nigerian job. Hey guys, I'm I'm actually in Australia, not in Nigeria. Okay, there's no power failure over here. <laughs> um, no, but the point I was making was, um, you know, I feel like. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've gotten it together, guys. It's okay. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't bring back the chimes. All right. Um, yeah, so the point I was making is, um, you know, I feel like the way we can actually um, move forward is by um, supporting each other, you know, black men supporting black women, black women supporting black men, um, you know, we show into our kids how it's done, you know, like I said, you know, the way the way it was, you know, um, at least back in Nigeria, you know, um, you see the pastor, you know, they talk about their wives, they praise their wife and all these things. And celebrate their wives you know granted you know i don't live in their house so i can't tell you what's happening there you know but then i love to see the positive celebration of their wives and things like that and you know as a pk that was what i saw as well my dad you know will always celebrate my mom doesn't mean they never had you know disagreements or things that they didn't you know sort of um agree on or what have you but you know they they, they work together as as a unit and they celebrated each other and they showed that and the same thing now that I'm married, you know, no matter what happens, you know, I respect my wife, you know, we might have disagreement, we'll talk about it and get to the bottom of it, but we won't be like, you know, sort of disrespecting each other, like, oh, you're this, you're that, you know, and, and to me, I, I think that's that's how we should um, move forward, that's how we, we should solve um, the problem, 
you know, by 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 giving positive um, um, affirmations and celebrating um, each other, you know, and and that's one of the um, one thing that was being said um, by Mo. Uh, I think with the whole Asian thing, you know, I can say um, specifically in Australia and um, in New Zealand, you know, Australasia, it's all a case of you know the, because the Chinese, because the Asians have this. There's this narrative of they are very smart people. They're very intellectual. They're very, um, very, very good with their brain and all those things. There's a high percentage of Australasians, Australians, New Zealanders, and things like that marrying Asians more than even more than even um, other races. You know. So and um, one, one one thing that always happens when black people, especially Americans, talk about racism, I always say, especially like even on on Maria's channel, I always say. This is my two cents from a black person, an African's point of view, but I don't want to compare my experience to you guys. And I always say that, and they always tell me, come on, David, you also know about racism and things like that. But for me, I always tell them, you know, yes, I know about racism, but our racism is, is different, to be honest. You know, our, our racism is different. I have a friend, you know, who lives on the Isle of Man in the UK, Deji. We went to uni together. He's uh, an auditor for um, PwC. We grew up together in Nigeria. His racism is quite different from what my my, my folks in the U.S. see, because all the kind of um you know a uh, black man being you know unnecessarily just arrested by the police and whatever, he has never faced that kind of thing at his pl- on the Isle of Man in the U.K. And I've never faced that in the, in Australia as well. Uh, I've got friends in in New Zealand that they've never faced that. But my family in the in the U.S. in Maryland, you know, in, in Boston, they tell me that these things happen. So I know that it, it's really different, you know. So I never try to compare or say that you know, um, I want to jump on that conversation with them. So when they're talking about it from their perspective, I always like to just listen and say, you know what. It's different. We have different perspectives. We have different realities. And I'm not going to say that you are over egging the whole racism thing because your reality is different from my reality. And so the whole concept of, you know, people marrying um, outside of their race is something that in many of these places that I've mentioned is not seen as a big deal. It's just seen as, you know, people love who they love. You know, they have a family, they have a future. And that's it. As long as that person is treating you right, as long as that person is loving you the way you should be loved and all those kind of things, people just feel like, you know what, that's great. But because of the political lines and the racism and things like that in the US, I see why it is a big deal for black people to be with black people. And I never try to argue it with, 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 my, with my American folks, you know. But then I love what Siwe said, which is also my perspective. You know, I'm married to a black woman, you know, and I've got families who are all married to black people. Um, but for me, I, I just kind of lean on the part that Siwe said, you know, I don't think we should be losing sleep on the fact that someone is not being with a black person. Because again, you have to look at it from one perspective, you know, are you actually going to solve the black people's problem or are you going to solve or save the black race by marrying a black person or by all people marrying a black person? I don't necessarily think so because for every black person that's marrying a white person, there's actually multiple black people are marrying black people. And as um as um Mo has already said, the statistics are quite 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 clear. You know, we can't just say, you know, go off of what we want to see on Hollywood and say, oh, uh, you know, black people are marrying white people or when they get rich now they marry. I, I don't necessarily agree because as an engineer, as a PhD holder, whatever, I have several friends who are married to black people and they are black people as well. You know, so it's not like when we get rich or when we get prosperous, we don't marry black people. So I, I never want to go along that line. And also, you know, Sean was saying yesterday that he's open. You know, and that's 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 kind of like the perspective I, I, I kind of come from because I know a lot of people who are being with, you know, black people, definitely they've been with the, the, the wrong type of black person but they've had several black relationships and it, it, it hasn't worked for them and they've got cheated on and they've got several bad experiences and things like that. Again, I say they have been with the wrong black person. It's not a case of black person or white person, okay? So don't say, oh, that person should have been with another black person. That's I'm not saying that. My point, what I'm saying is they have been with these kind of persons and when they actually decided to date outside their race or date a white person or date an Asian person, they found something that suited them Whatever it is, I don't know. But you can ask them. They said they found what actually 
<laughs> Sean, I'm not pulling you in. <laughs> they found what suited them and made them happy. And to me, you know, if I'm their friend and I see them happy, busting with joy, celebrating, and they're full of life and, and, and they're living life good. And, and they're not telling me that, oh, you know, he, he hit me yesterday or he slapped me the other day or whatever. For me, when I look at that, I rather want them to be happy and have a good family and have a good life and be in good health than necessarily tell them, oh, now that you're happy and you're busting with joy and you're having a good time and, and, and life is great for you, then I'm going to now say, oh, why don't you now go to a black man? You are wrong for going to a white man. You see what I'm saying? And many of us as black people as well, we have people who are white people who are our friends. And some of them are even our, our, our you know, for some, for some uh, lack of a better word, ride or die. And many of them, you know, if they now tell you that, oh, they find a black guy that they really love and they're happy with and they really like and whatever, will you now go to the back and go and tell that black brother and tell him, bro, you're a sellout. Why are you, why are you being with a, a, a white girl? Whatever. That's someone who you grew up with. That's someone who you grew up with. That's someone who you've known for all your life. That's someone who, uh, even though they're a white person, they're your, your close pal. You see what I'm saying? So the whole concept or the whole ideology of, you know, um, people have to stick to this or stick to that. I, I honestly don't um, uh, align to that. For me, I just feel that, you know, like see what said, uh, let's not uh, lose our sleep over people um, 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 being with um, a white person or being with someone who's not their race. For me, um, I, I'm, okay, for me, I'll, I'll just say, you know, let people um, actually, let's, let's foster black love Obviously, I'm not against that. I separate that. I, I, I'm like Sylvia said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm grateful to God. I'm with a black woman. If you get one, you know, that's great for you. And I, and I celebrate you. If you don't and you get one who is not uh, and that person treats you right and loves you according to how Christ says that you should, you should be loved, then I celebrate you and I hope that you have the best as well. <clears throat> Uh, David, okay, go for it. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, so I just wanted to point out one thing. So you have Seaway, David, and myself on here, and we're three highly educated Black people that are saying that we know a lot of educated Black couples together. And so that's a point where, again, we have to be careful about speaking about facts versus the anecdotal information that we want to put out there, right? And so that's part of it, right? And I saw someone in the comments say something about, well, that's your world, Kay. That's not most people out here. And I started off my point by saying, I can't speak for every Black person. Nobody here can speak for every Black person. We are all in the Black community, whether you're African, you're Caribbean, you're American, we're all in the Black community. We're just all experiencing it in different ways. And so I'm just saying, from what I see. And another point, Seaway was making a point about um, not necessarily seeing black couples in certain parts of the world, which was a point that Crystal was actually making at first before that was interrupted. Cause I think her point was that when she was in LA, there were a lot of interracial couples. And then I think she moved to Atlanta, I can't remember the city, but she moved and then that's when she started seeing more black men approaching her. And so again, it's it's not necessarily because you're black, you have to think about it. Like it's what you were seeing, how you were experiencing the black community because the black community looks different in LA than it does in Atlanta, than it does in London. And so when people are coming up here, it's not that anyone can speak for the entire black community point blank period, that's it. It's from our own perspectives. And I'll say that because I actually have to act like I have a deadline and so I have to go, but thank you very much. I appreciate you, Kay, man. So much love, man. You know, and I, I rock, I rocked with your opinion um, or your stat at least about uh, the Asian community because it <clears throat> helped us get a bit of one's own because um, we men had said something similar and it was shot down as in we can't use that. Like, um, but, you know, I, I, I it, it made sense for me. It's like, the hyper focus on our community when others are also doing the exact same thing is what 
is problematic. And I think everybody experiences life differently, depending on what area you grew up in, which is why I started with Max talking about UK and our experience. I've gone from black to black to black to black to black in different environments. So, you know, it's it's locked into me now, you know. Uh, shout out to my white Christian sisters, but uh, I'm looking at my black sisters, you know what I mean? Like, and that's because of what I've experienced. So, you know, if you move to another area, you might see things a little bit more differently, you know, uh, depending on where, you, where you've grown up. And is everybody rich on the panel? Hey, I don't know what their wage packets are, guys, okay? But if everybody's rich on the panel, thank God, okay? All right? Y'all be always cussing, saying people are dusty. So we thank God that people are rich on this panel. Um, All right, loan, loan me a dollar, Kojo. Um, huh? You ain't getting nothing from me. Who's the rich people on the panel? You ain't, you ain't getting nothing from me, Sile. Loan me a dollar. You, you, uh, you bought that $500 wig. I'm still waiting on mine. <laughs> <laughs> David's the one working on a rig. You better get your money from him. <laughs> Right, chimes. he better be getting money with them chimes in the background <laughs> for every time a dollar is dropping. <laughs> they, would, they would be even mad. They would be mad. Oh, gracious, gracious. All right, someone else got an opinion. Let me get uh, Anne in. She's just come in. And hello, welcome to the conversation. Um, wait, wait, one second. <laughs> no worries, Anne. No worries. Uh, we'll, we'll allow her to, to sort out that out. Um, <clears throat> uh yes uh <laughs> listen someone said they need a dollar listen guys listen you know what your time is coming you know i i foresee the lord blessing some of you you know what first and foremost guys you need to uh invest you need to you know provide a seed for me okay you know provide a, i'm hearing the lord say a hundred from you guys he's he's saying hundred as a seed from all of you hundred hundred, hundred. No, i'm joking and uh go for it Hey, um, sorry about that. Um, my daughter, I had to give her to my husband. I apologize. No, that's all right. Um, uh, thank you for having me on the panel. I this Love. is my first time being up here. I've been watching you. I don't comment a lot because you know, again, so those comments, uh, people get a little bit crazy. But I appreciate you for having your platform and your view. I appreciate it. Um, I was listening earlier, and I believe it was Mo or was it KB who made the point of it's what is visible, the visibility is important and it does color our world. And I said, um, my husband's in the military and we are currently living in Okinawa, Japan right now. And yes, <laughs> um, I don't know because um, well, one day his brother sent us some content, I think it was Kevin Sandwich content. We were not in the YouTube universe or anything like that because um, he just came one day and he stated, oh, white men, white women treat black men better and sent his brother a whole bunch of content about it. And I was like, wait, what? What is this? What is going on here? And then we got, we kind of got dragged into this world. This, it was a spiral. You, you spiraled into this world of the divisiveness on the internet. And then I think from that, I started re-seeing a lot more interracial couples in my world. I don't think I've never no noticed it before because I wasn't looking for it. But I feel like when you take in certain content or you take in certain media and you it's like buying a brand new car and then you see that car everywhere. And um, it's, good to kind of realize that this might not be the reality of the world and promoting love within yourself and um, within your community and teaching um, our children to love their blackness and to love themselves and just realizing that just because this is the what you see on the internet, the, it's, I feel like it's a minority, but they have a loud voice. I don't think they're the majority, they're just a loud minority. And they're coloring the perceptions because of our children, because a lot of children engage in content online more so than they used to. And before, of course, the televisions didn't, didn't help with um, portraying uh, black men and black women in a good light all the time. I mean, from the, from we dropped the 90s, we had all this black love on TV in the 90s, then we head into the 2000 and it, we didn't see it anymore. And I, just, that's just my two cents on the subject. I mean, we do need to teach and I, for healing our community, I do think we just need to teach 
self-love within our Blackness because we are people who are oppressed and our light, our version of us of, that we see in media is not usually colored in positivity. It's colored in negativity a lot. And, um, and I think that kind of, when you see interracial couples, sometimes you do have to think, oh, is he with that person? Because he think, because they're, he's, he's detaching himself from blackness or she's detaching herself from blackness by going that route because what has been shown to us isn't that black is positivity or black love is positivity. And um, that's my solution is like trying to teach our within our community the positivity of blackness. And that's my point. I'm sorry. I don't no, know. No, appreciate it. No, no. I'm, I'm, that's, that's boss. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, again, appreciate that. You know, you've made some good points there. You know about teaching and also about the visibility aspect as well. Um, we've heard that quite a few on this, a uh, few times on this panel, which it means that we are seeing similar angles. That you know we understand how the power of imagery plays a big part. You know, um, you know people find it hard to believe if they don't see. You know what I mean? So I'm definitely, definitely hearing that, and I appreciate um, you know the, this conversation, which is why it's so important that we have both men and women part of this conversation. For instance, I know people are asking, what are some of the solutions? Well, if I ask for us as black people to infiltrate, you know, um, someone might call it the, the, the mountains, things like, you know, uh, 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 media, you know, and music and, and infiltrate, you know, uh, arts and arts and et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, and infiltrate business and stuff like that, you know, part of that visibility is not just seeing black men the visibility requires i see black men with black women okay all right i'm not trying to see black men with white women um, or white white men with black women that's not part of the visibility uh, do you know what i mean so that's why the solution requires both of us okay it requires us both to be uh seeing from the same point of view right singing from the same she um, hymn sheet as they say um and again i believe that starts with us as black men first and foremost Okay, uh, uh, Joe, you've been waiting to get on and for a long time, and, and I know you've been wanting to say your piece. Go for it. No. Hello, Joe. Damn, his connection be doing the most... Yeah, Joe, your, your Joe, your connection. It's wild out here. It's wild. Oh, damn. Uh, Self Hills, uh, welcome to the conversation. I know I've seen you in the chat. You wanted to have your say. Um, you know, you want to have your 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 opinion on here. Let us know what your thoughts are. No. Self love, mate Hills. Oh no, her connection also is gone. Well, his connections are not working away. Uh, let's see, try again. Joe, you wanna, can we hear you? Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not popping for them. Unfortunately, their connections aren't working. Um, um, okay. Anyone else have a, 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 a oh, self hills back. Let's try again. Self hills. Can you hear us? Okay. I, can you hear me? Oh, fantastic. We can hear you. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. I didn't know how to un unmute myself. That's all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, the people that are probably watching this and are participating in this bar class are probably not the ones who need to do the healing. The people who need to do the healing are the ones who are facing no social consequences. You have, um, <clears throat> I think I've mentioned in the chat before about um, Black women being blocked from entering a club. Everybody else was in, allowed to enter the club, including Black men, but Black women were not. It's almost like back in the day when you had Jim Crow laws, where Black people were not allowed to enter establishments, except it's not Black people, it's just Black women. And the people who may be blocking us from entering these establishments are not necessarily white people. So, um, yeah, and the people who are speaking bad about our skin color now in the open experience no real social consequences 
So I feel like part of the solution would be for these people to experience consequences because they have no reason to love. You know, we don't expect racists to, to stop being racist because they need to love us. We don't expect them to love us. We have to um, enact some kind of consequence on them. That's what I think the solution could be. Okay. So you, so you, for you, it's about maybe potentially having those people who are causing the harm, um, you know, verbally, especially, um, is to have consequences for the actions that they they take. Yeah. Any particular consequences in mind? Well, um, I mean, I guess I could say we people should stop buying, you know, financially supporting these people, but. Um, how do we bring it? Like, I feel like we need to make sure that the problem isn't being underestimated. I feel like it's being underestimated because I, I'm hearing stuff about oh, well, it's just a small, loud minority. Like, it's not. It may be the minority, but it's a significant number, and they are loud. So, I think we have to stop treating it like it's insignificant. Um. Love sure could be the answer, but like I said, we can't make people love us, right? Um, how do I, we have to get the word out that this is a real big problem? It's not minuscule, and then I think from there, there could be financial and social consequences. Mm, okay, okay, well, I, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. Uh, so potentially looking at consequences for those who obviously are, um, you know, uh, uh, not helping foster those <clears throat> uh, who are working actively against the community in terms of being able to uplift it. Um, and, and and would that include both parties, though? Would that include both parties who are not helping the conversation? Or is that just black men? I'm just curious. Well, OK, so definitely both parties are not helping the um, solution. Um, I think we have to stop giving people the path of excusing everything or most of the problems on racism, or, or, or I should say white racism anyway, because that's just giving people so much of an excuse. If you elim eliminate that excuse, what do you really have? Um, so that's the, that's the big issue. I don't know how to motivate people to do something for the greater good of somebody who they feel it may not benefit them. Sometimes people only care if it, if it works out for them. So I don't know how to motivate people, even if they are our brothers, to um, be concerned about the things that bother or affect us negatively as Black women. I don't know how, how they would do it, but I think black women would be the first to well should be the first anyway to deal with this okay <clears throat> i rocks it up okay i'm hearing you all right i appreciate self-love seals thank you all right any other person want to thank you again for this uh oh yeah Anne, you want to go for it uh i think my husband wanted to say something please go there ahead <laughs> hey guys how you doing Yes, sir. You sound, you sound young and springy. Well oh, done. And you know, I'm 21. Uh, oh, oh, no. No, no, I'm 32. Wow, look at that. So I thought you two were a young couple, 21. Look at that. I thought both of you were 21. <laughs> Still young, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. We'd love to hear your opinions. Go for it, sir. But what I want to say is the in the, in the community, right? Yes, sir. I think that we have, um, I think that we have forgotten that we both, that both black men and black women go through things constantly, right? We have gone through some of the, we, we uh, in the community, we have gone through some of the toughest moments and instead of having patience for each other and working through that, we are constantly going against every, we're constantly going against people, right? Especially the people who look like us, right? And I think once we figure out like ourselves and once we are able to, once we are able to love ourselves fully, cause I think that's a huge issue in the black and in, in the black community 
is loving ourselves because we've never been taught to love ourselves. We've always, right, for black men, we've always been told, don't cry, you know, don't, uh, don't cry. You know, you're a man, you need to do this, this, that, this, that, and the fourth. When it's okay to cry, when it's okay to, uh, to be weak in front of your spouse, it's okay to, it's okay to cry to them. It's okay to, um, to be yourself, right? And for black women, that this the black women has the, you know, the strong, independent black women who don't need no man stereotype out there, right? And that is a constant. And the thing about it is what's happening is the black, uh, the uh, the black woman is going to the white man because she feels as if she can be she she can be like soft she can respect them right because and uh, for a, a, a lot of black men that I've talked to they feel as if they have to be dominant they have to this mm. is my way or the highway kind of deal and there's no there's no edge in there's no word in edge wise I think that's the ultimate issue is that we have to re- we have to realize uh, especially as black men that you're you don't have to exude dominance you don't have to be uh this this alpha masculine male right it's about having a conversation it's about sitting down with your spouse and actually helping a forming a plan together or you know and i think the black woman will respect that more because she is being heard she's being mm-hmm. valued because that's all it is oh that's all they want is to be heard valued and uh, in security and you know feel secure in the relationship if you can't provide that, then of course they're not gonna, you know, be. Uh, they're not, of course they're not gonna be in a relationship with you because you're not providing those 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 necessities in a relationship. So I think that I think once we understand that this this super masculine this super masculine male, right? If we stop being the super masculine male, I apologize for talking so long too. <laughs> but, no, 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 you know, you're good, you're good, bro. It's, it's valuable stuff. Mm-hmm. If we stop being the super masculine male and allow ourselves to sit down with our spouse or our counterpart and tell them, hey, you know, I'm really like I'm really beaten right now. Like I'm really broken right now. This job has gotten to me this, you know, this is getting to me. And I like I really need you right now. That would that would show that would open up so many doors in that relationship. Like for my wife and I, like I, I stress out constantly. And I feel safe and comfortable coming to her. And she doesn't look at me less of a man because mm. of that. And I think that's what we need. That's what both parties need to do. I think that will help us out a lot. I love that, man. I love that. You know, <clears throat> I love that you put it also in the relationship context in terms of, you know, um, looking after our families to, you know, uh, make sure that we are um to make sure that we are leading from those places and i think honestly that's probably one of the best um one of the best places we can start you know is that you know um we work by generationally impacting you know because it it is hard to turn a tree round when it has already grown roots and is tall that's that's the equivalent of asking if of black good black men trying to change the black men that are poor but if we can start with the generation after us input good seeds um begin to kind of uh be influential in our communities right um you know the, the the thing is the thing is you know uh i was saying this last night part of the solution is that who whatever lane you're in stay true to your lane and kill it Right, you know, stay true yeah. to it and keep it. Go for it, bro. I mean, yeah, one hundred percent. I think once we start, the, the the issue is we always see what other people have and we want it. Right, we see our next door neighbor driving a new Benz. Oh, I want a new Benz tomorrow. I have to constantly up, you know, constantly go up and up and up and and be the best at whatever it is. It's okay to not be the best at something or not to have the best of something. You know. We shouldn't be looking. We shouldn't be looking for. We shouldn't be looking towards trying to beat our brothers or sisters. We should try to, first of all, live our lives how we're supposed to live our lives comfortably. Look for something for comfort. You know, what I'm saying not to be the best. And then also, <laughs> also like when it comes down to like, oh, this person has a million dollars. I want a million dollars. But do you know the struggle that person went through to get that million dollars? That's what people don't really tell you. They don't te- they don't show you the struggle that they went through to get that million dollars. Behind that successful business, they probably had 10 failed businesses. 
I think that we need to. I, I think that we need to start, you know, looking at the 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 work that goes into doing it. Mm, yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, man. I uh, yeah. This this is this is this is real, man. This is real. You know, leading by you know our families first, which is, you know, it's it's a godly perspective. You know. Um, which is why, you know, God is even makes a decree. I think it's in uh, Timothy talking about how a man is leading his home. Uh, not even man. He doesn't say man. He talks about someone leading, someone who's uh, leading their home. They should provide for their home. And that provision isn't just money. It's it's part of emotional care. It's, the, you know, looking after them physically. Um, it's financially. It's spiritually. It's mentally. It's emotionally. There is a lot of work within our community that, requires us as men to heal um, first and foremost so that we can have an effective uh, we can have effective leadership but first and for and, and first and foremost um, making sure that we're building healthy homes so this is this this is and which is why you know we make uh, commentary on this channel about people like Nick Cannon and future uh, I find them detestable in terms of their actions not those people but as as their actions because they create multiple homes, which they're not in, and they think their money is going to cover them in these aspects of being missing. And, you know, um, any other person who thinks, you know, that that's acceptable to just be out here just impregnating people and, and not taking care of their responsibilities by not being there physically um, is trash. And it's just, and, and honestly, it's trash. And, and it, we speak about this on the channel all the time because that's literally where it starts from fatherless daughters fatherless sons daughters uh fatherless uh sorry motherless or toxic even mothers and, and and who are into sons and daughter and to sons and um and, and daughters do not help anybody in the long run right because you train a child in a way to go and he will not depart from it so if he's had a reckless upbringing it's very difficult to change that so we we need we need both parties here to heal but i'm i'm talking specifically for the men you know we we need to be able to um lead by example you know um leading your conduct which is what i'm trying to do on this channel here so uh you know that's you know that's why this conversation is happening right now because that's why i wanted to teach about the situation with annalisa because it's not necessarily best about annalisa it's about the fact that how do we handle a situation like that i'm not about to start getting angry and start fighting you in that moment right it doesn't help the situation and hopefully that should be able to teach other men listen this we 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 have a responsibility in how we temperature set you know i'm not gonna let we're not gonna let people bring us out of our pocket and hopefully in that respect other men are seeing that other men are drawn to this place as well um and want to also keep in mind men are very men are submissive you know when it comes to other men they are submissive if that man has respect other men will 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 submit to the leadership without saying anything one thing men are really good at is following lead which is why Kevin Samuels has a million people following him because men are really good at just going, do you know what? If someone's better than me, I'm going to just, I'm going to follow. I'm going to just submit. I'm, I'm, I ain't going to think about it. If he says go, I'll go, which is great, but it's also a bad thing because as soon, if that leader's corrupt, they're going to be the first people that also stick with him. They're going to stick beside him. So, you know, we, we have to create healthy spaces uh, um, um, and we have to create healthy generational seeds through teaching um, and the Bible says that a, uh, God knew that Abraham would teach his family about God so he could trust them with kids because he knew that the generations after him, him being a father to the generations, he knew he would teach correctly his family. So that's also a very big part for us as men is teaching our households, you know, uh, correctly um, and, and, and guiding them correctly and, and being uh, good leaders within our homes and that helps as well so uh yeah i say what we're gonna take last thought last thoughts from people because um we are towards the end now so um last thoughts so let me go let me let me go uh david give us your last thoughts bro yeah um it's been a great conversation and um i really enjoy the different perspectives you know like i said um i think this is the part of the solution to um, some of the issues that we have um having these conversations so that those of us who are you know 
frontiering the new set of black families um, that are going to come uh, in, in the next few years can have these different perspectives. And I really appreciate um, what um, Hans Osman said uh, because I think it's um, part of the reason why we're where we are today. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of the strong black woman, I think um, like someone put in the comment also comes from, and as, as you have also mentioned, comes from, you know, all these um, cases where fathers have left the home and the woman has had to, you know, pull up a bootstrap and, and raise the whole family uh, um, and the kids and, and send them to school and do all those things. So yes, definitely that woman has something to be proud about. That woman has something to feel, you know, happy and, 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 and proud of. And when, when she then gets to the man who um, wants to lead and, 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 you know, probably is ready to be there and provide and support and all those things, these things are not just switches that you turn on and turn off. So it's going to take that woman some time to be able to rest in the, in the, in the fact that there is now a leader in the room and I have to sit back. And I think that's one of the things that Courtney was, uh, was saying on, on, on her life, that, you know, she's gone through this her whole life with her mom it's not going to be easy for her to just turn it off and turn it on, you know? And, and, and um, so we, as men, we, we need to really hold ourselves accountable. And I, I always say, you know, everything rises and falls on leadership and that really, really rests on us as men, you know, to, to the point you made yesterday, which I wanted to also chime in on was the fact that, you know, there are different styles of leadership and I, and I hope that you will do the video on it sometime or have a life on it because um, I think it's part of the reason why a lot of men feel pressured to be who they are not because we all have different temperaments. We all have different perspectives. We all have different natures as, as, as men and as women. So for some people, they, 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 they come from home where I've even grown up with friends like that, where, you know, their dad is not the boisterous talking every time kind of person. He's not the one in your face. He's not, you know, the one who's talking every time. But I bet you what always happens is mom always goes to him and say, daddy, what should we do? And he tells mommy, this is what we should do. And then mommy goes in and says, now all the kids get in line and everybody gets in line. But she's taking orders from the big boss. But the big boss is not like right there in your face. So when you're looking from the outside in, you're looking and saying, man, this woman is running the whole show. But she's actually consulting with the head because she understands that he's the head. So if that kind of man feels like, oh, this is how Mr. So-so-so is running his home. I need to do that. Then he's going to fall into the kind of situation where iron is grinding against iron. Because the woman is like, no, you've always known me to be this person where we dated for three years, for four years. So where is this, your personality of trying to whatever coming from? You see what I'm saying? So sometimes we, we, we try to just, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, emulate something we see from another person, <clears throat> forgetting that our perspective or our leadership style or our nature as men could be different. And that's part of the problem I have with the red pill and the manosphere kind of people because you just try to generalize and things like that, which I always try not to do by just saying, you know, this is how some people do. This is how some people do. You need to find who you are, know who you are, rest in who you are, and sharpen yourself to be a better person, better man than you were yesterday. That should be the objective, not to be like another man, not necessarily to be what another man is. You can pick things from him that you see and like and try to sharpen yourself and be better. You know, so I think just just not to, to go on because we're rounding up. I think we men definitely need to do better because we're leaders, we're leading our community and we're the one who are in the front line, you know, and we need to do that in our finances. We need to do that in our education. You know, you look at the U.S., you know, black men are reading at, 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 the, at the grade four level. It's not sufficient. It's not good enough. You know, we need to upgrade. We need to, to improve ourselves so that we can lead our families, not necessarily what the Red Pill is saying, which is, oh, improve so you can get the baddest chick. No, that's not the goal. The goal should be so you can raise a better family for the black race. You can raise a community that is moving forward and leading forward. And I believe that, you know, it, it, it's difficult for a lot of men to understand, but when a man is leading in the right way, except that woman has some trauma or some issues from the past, I believe she would fall into that submissive role that you're looking for. But if you're not leading right, the truth is women are good at makeshift. If she sees you're not leading right, she will run into that position and say, okay, I've got to steer this ship. I've got to make it work. I've got to put it in, in order. And so don't start bitching or, or, or shouting when she tries to do that. So I just, on a general road, let's just try as much as possible as men to improve, level up, 
you know, get better at being leaders. Uh, and, and I'll just leave it there. Thank you so much, Kujo, for the, the, the opportunity and for the conversation. No worries, David. Much love. Appreciate you as always. Um, and <coughs> if we can get a quick round up from you guys. Oh, okay. My wife just stepped away, so she. No so worries. You do take the place, bro. Men have to lead. Right. <laughs> Reef in front, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna make my I'm gonna make my uh, my final quick. Um, men have to realize that submission also plays a role in leadership, right? Learning when to submit and when not to submit is also a valuable asset when when it comes to leading. Uh, and my job, of course, I'm in, uh, I'm in the military. You have to learn how to take orders and how to give orders. You have to learn how to you need to learn how to not burn your people out for overtasking them, and you need to learn how to take more upon yourself when your people are burnt out, right? So that's I, I take that and I bring it into my marriage. For me, this is a team effort. Yes, we 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 both lead in different aspects because with me, I may not be that I'm not the best organized person. So my wife is the best, or my wife is more organized than I am. So I let her kind of take the lead on organization, right? And if there's a decision that needs to be made, we'll come together and we'll I'll take the ball. I'll shoot it down the. Uh, I'll shoot it down the. Uh, I'm not. A good, I'm not a sports person. Let me just say that. I'm not a sports person. So I just shoot it down the field. Um, I think we need to, uh, again, we need to bring back conversations in a marriage or in a relationship, have conversations about where you want to go and then per, uh, make an action plan to make that happen. And this is a two party, this is a two, par, uh, two party thing, not just me want my way, me, a man, follow me, because it's not going to happen all the time. And the way that you're going, she may be able to see something that you can't because you both live both different experiences. So you have to you have to take this uh, the the opinion and and the experience of your spouse and put that into your into your action plan because you don't know everything. We are men, yes, we are men. We take things and we make things happen. But in the same token, we sometimes we get lost. We need to ask for directions, and our spouse is here to help us out with those directions. If we don't understand something, she can go. She you know she she knows she's better at it than I am. You got it. Okay, what, what what you need? I'll help you support you in any way you can form. Because leadership is also about support. You have to support your you have to support your spouse and what they want to do and what they want to achieve. And if they need help with things, help them out. It's not a, to me. It's not that hard. But um, yeah, that's my final. Thank you. Love for that. Uh, um, wait, I don't know your name, sir. Oh, Lenny. Lenny, pleasure to meet you, bro. Well, hopefully, we have to have you on this channel again, you know. So, I appreciate your thoughts, sir. Oh, thanks, man. Definitely. No worries, man. Gracious. Uh, Mo, we want to hear from you. Final thoughts. Um, so, my final thoughts is you, you, because you can't control the world, you can't touch every human being that's on this planet. The things that you can do and you can control, control it. Black people have been stripped of a lot of power but remember that you do you do have power you have power in like we said before what you choose to listen to who you choose to be around who you choose to admire who you choose to respect and the things that you put into your body physically mentally and emotionally so even if you only know a handful of black people treat the black people in your family kindly even if you only have a few girlfriends, treat those girlfriends kindly. And most of all, like treat yourself kindly because there's always gonna be someone that's gonna say something bad. We see it on media. They're always trying to put, they're trying to put you down. They don't want you to be happy. They don't want you to be successful. They don't want you to walking around smiling. That's not the devil's plan for you. But what you can do is Love yourself, love those around you. Make sure that your friends feel beautiful. Make sure that your sons feel confident in themselves. Make sure that your daughters feel like they have value in the world. Be that person that can at least counteract the nonsense that the world is putting on you. And I know that's a lot because a lot of people might not even have that support system. It's just a matter of like, you're on here now, try. Reach out to people, go to um, make little communities for yourself and just really put good things into your system and into your body because this world isn't built to make you feel good about yourself. 
Literally, this world is not built to make you feel good about yourself, but you can try your best to do such, like listening to Little Black Book. These are great conversations to listen to. Praying, meditating, even if it's just take, take 10 minutes of the day to yourself and just sit down and just shut everything out and really say positive things to yourself. Do things like that. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, wow, um, I'm not saying that all white people are enemies. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that, cause I'm looking at it from a Christian standpoint. This is not a, this is not heaven. This is a rough world. We live in winter, winter is cold. Even the weather is not our friend, right? So I'm looking at it from a biblical perspective. I'm not even looking at it all the way from a racial perspective. This is just in the world, you're gonna deal with obstacles. You're gonna deal with people who don't always want the best for you, that don't always wish the best for you, but you can be a kind person. It's free and it takes nothing out of you to say, hello, how are you doing? You look nice today. You look very beautiful today. Good job. You can be that encouraging person and things of that nature. So we can even take race out of it. This world is a cold place, yeah. So it's just be that person to make it a little warmer for yourself and those around you, because that's something you can control. That's um, my fun. Appreciate that, Mo. Thank you very much. Max, <clears throat> round us up. Benedict us up. Finish okay. us up. Ultimately, this conversation is not complete if we think the solution is visibility in and of itself because visibility is just an opportunity to magnify something but we as a community need to think about what we're going to magnify mm. and so it's not just the surface it's the substance and we have to really get together and consider what's going to make us healthy what's going to allow us to be godly what's going to allow us to be victorious what's going to allow us to have the generational wealth and the positions that we desire and that's the conversation that we have to take forward really mm. i'm hearing you thank you very much max man hearing you hearing you listen audience it's been wild it's been powerful it's been amazing um you know i i appreciate everybody jumping on you know we had over 300 people join us this late in the evening i know it's late for you guys it's eight o'clock in the morning for me um and max uh but uh you know it's it's good to have this conversation this is this is this is what we need right and uh, we've had a few different um diff a few different solutions out there as well right uh, i think overall for everybody here you know i think we've got to contribute towards our our, our, our con we've got to contribute towards our final goal that's both men and women i'll be honest with you right because we've all got a role to play in this um in terms of uplifting our community but for obviously for me for a man speaking to the men you know we i, I told the men this you know our focus here is or our strategy here is to uh, be in your lane be excellent in your lane and and pull other black men around you who can who can also be a part of that journey um, and some people are better with organization. They will have companies and organizations. Some people will lead by literally example. They will be uh, your Samson of your generation. They will do uh, wild things out there, right? That will pull the community that way. But the most important thing is, like I said, you know, first and foremost, do what you must do excellent, excellently well, all right? Um, when Daniel was excellent, he had the opportunity to speak life into the kin situation, right? Because he was so good. Um, and so excellence is recognized, whether we Christian or not. I know we have some non-Christians here. Excellence is recognized, right? And it cannot be denied. Excellence. Good is good. But when you're excellent, it can't be denied, no matter who you are. And so we're asking for us as black people. I know it's. I know we always get it. We've got to work 10 times harder. It is what it is. We're in that scenario right now. But let's be excellent, right? Let's be excellent. And that allows us and affords us platforms, stages, allows us to allows us to speak boldly and confidently um, on these places that will allow us also again to, to do more than just visibility, but actually to actually start to speak change into existence. So um, you know, I appreciate you guys coming on and having a conversation with myself. It is late for you guys. I understand that. I appreciate that. But hopefully you've had this conversation. Hopefully man them and the female them. Now when someone else is saying something, we pull them up. You know what I'm saying? We pull them up. Hey, not in our community, not around me, right? 
we it starts with us as individuals, right? So me as a man, if I hear another black man talking a certain way and he's in my vicinity, I pull him up. I say, I don't agree with that, bro. That's not how we talk about our sisters. That's not how we move. Um, so I appreciate guys. Stay locked and stay loaded. And we will see you guys very, very soon. And I appreciate your love. All right. Black, you know what time it is. Time it is. Time it is.